Let's see if the streaming works today. Will the streams work? Oh, yep, yeah, streams are working today. Hello. This is stream number 418. I'm going to take a break from my usual work today and do what a uh, friend suggested today, which is some katas on Code Wars. So this is a site where they give you like little programming challenges and they support Rust now, which I'm really into. So I am going to uh, be doing this today. I already started a few of them. I tried them out off stream beforehand. So I have already established myself on the site. Here I am. I'm a... Uh, Rank 7 Q, I hope I'm saying that right, and uh, we're working our way up to rank up to 6 Q. So, we'll see how it goes today. Your timer on. Okay, good. All right. So let me uh, make sure this doesn't overlap. There we go. And maximize the view. We're going to be staying in this screen the whole stream, I think. Yeah, I like that. It's probably, I should probably make a an auto hotkey to make the window fit exactly within the bounds here, not with chat not obscured. Okay, anyway, let us train. Okay. Dubstep. Polycarpus works as a DJ in the best Berlin nightclub. And he often uses dubstep music in his performance. Recently, he has decided to take a couple of old songs and make dubstep remixes for them. Let's assume that a song contains some number of words that don't contain wub. To make the dubstep remix of the song, Polycarpus inserts a certain number of words wub before the first word of the song. The number may be zero. Hey there, Lumicode. And hey there, Desdiv. Desdiv, hello. After the last word, the number may be zero, and between words, at least one between any pair of neighboring words. And then the boy glues together all the words, including wub, in one string and plays the song at the nightclub. For example, a song with the words I, M, X can be transformed into a dub step remix as wub, wub, I, wub, M, wub, wub, X, and cannot transform into wub, wub, I, M, wub, X. Um, okay. So zero, you can have zero before and zero after the last. Zero before the first, zero after the last. But you have to have at least one between any pair. Okay, I got it. Hey, Ereld, how are you doing? Doing uh, katas today in Code Wars. So, and Endurn, out of EJ indeed. You could always reverse my... Rhyme with ADJ and get back at him, EJ, you know. <laughs> Johnny has heard Polly Carver's new dubstep track, but since he isn't into modern music, he decided to find out what was the initial song that he remixed. Oh, okay, so the input is uh, like wub wub i wub m wub wub x, and we're supposed to re re restore the original. Single non empty string containing only uppercase English letters. Doesn't exceed 200 characters. Return the number of words in the initial song. Oh, return the words. I For some reason, I, I thought it said return the number of. Not that way. Not like that, EJ. Hey there, Atomic Nibble. <laughs> but good, good try, uh, Endorn. What a good Wub Wub song, yeah. After my stream, you started learning Rust. Good for you. It's an awesome language, I think. Awesomely difficult, that is. Okay, so, examples. Wub, wub, we, wub, are, wub, wub, the, wub, champions, wub, my, wub, friend, wub, is, we are the champions, my friend. Okay. I think I know how to do this. My um, algorithm in my head is going to be that we're going to... Um, use window and uh, scan for wubs and remove them. So if I window this, I guess we could just do win window to find the indices where wubs start or wubs are and put that into a, an iterator and then um, partition the slice by that somehow. 
Let me look about how to part... Can we partition a slice? Replace wub with empty string? <laughs> Would that be easier? Now don't give me any solutions. I'm supposed to try to come up with this myself. Let me try to do my initial thing. We'll see. Maybe the the best solutions are just replacing all the wubs with empty string. Okay. Um, you have no idea? That is actually a great idea, though, Endurn. Oh, what's this? It's experimental. It moves all consecutive repeated elements at the end of the slice. Actually, that's not what I want, right? Okay, never mind. Maybe partition. Maybe I'll just do it without using any anything from the standard library. Do you return a string or an array? Return a string, I think. Yeah, we got to return. So at the end, I got to collect it back into a string, and I got to put in spaces in 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 place of the internal wubs. Wub, 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 wub. Hey there, Rambane. How are you doing? So let me just uh, try this out now. Um, let wubs equal song dot window. Uh, what what's window in again? Slice windows. Is that in the prefix? I can never remember what's in the prefix and one, which one's not. Let's assume it's in the prefix. And I can just, or it's already used, and I can just say, um, when it's Windows, then right, Windows three. Um, dot filter. Each window is in, is a slice, right? So uh, let me do a um, enumerate. Uh, filter i comma. Um, window. Where I don't like the built-in editor here. I might actually, if I get too annoyed, I'll switch back to VS Code. What's the link? It's in the today command. Spring helpful advice unexpectedly. Yeah, no, no backseat coding while I'm doing the kata. Um, please. <laughs> hey there, Syrian. Going back to the DOS era. I missed, oh, you mean Windows? Like before Windows, it's DOS? <laughs> hey there, Romania 8. And hey there, uh, Naxmify. Code Wars, you haven't been on the site for a long time. I didn't even really think about Code Wars until a friend of mine suggested, hey, you're learning Rust, why don't you try some Rust katas? Windows 3, oh, I get it, Windows 3. Yeah, Windows 3.0. Okay, so it would be um, uh, window equals wub. So this should filter out all of them, and so then I want to, um, I don't need the window anymore, so I can, I can just do filter map, right? And then, um, I can say if windows wub, then it's, um, sum i. Oh, it's a wacky spacing here. What's going on? Else none. All right. So that gives me all the wubs, all the, the indices of all the wubs. And, um... I suppose what we can do, just naively, would be to, um... Yeah, just go through all of them, right? So, um... And we're going to, um, collect together the s slices that are between webs. <laughs> um, how would I want to do that? I guess I can just say let in, uh, let, uh, I don't know. I need another name. Names are hard. Original is string new uh four wub and wubs <laughs> stupid names um and let's also have let um i equals zero and you'll see why what does i mean um
original, well, I can say um, if wub is greater than i, that means that we have um, some of the original before that before the next wub. So it would be um, original. Is it what's the string method to append? Is it um, push or is it? Uh, Uh, I should be going here first, shouldn't I? It's push string, right? Yep, appends a slice. Push string. Uh, yeah, I need from the original, so that's song. From I to wub. And then, um, I need to add a space for where there is a wub, right? if there's a next one. So sh I should probably have, um, I'm never really good with initial cases. We'll see if this passes. If I is greater than zero original dot push a space. Let's try that out, I guess. Yeah, I'm training Rust. Yep. Just go discover code signal a few days ago. What's code signal? I'm on code wars. Is code signal similar? All right, let's test. No method named Windows. Okay, so I need to um, use that. Right. So it would be use standard slice. Hold on. Is it because I need to dereference the song? Or do I really need to do a use to bring in a trait of some kind? I think I probably need to bring in a trait, right? Use standard slice. Let's try that. Unused import. Okay, so where is Windows from? Oh, it's a struct. Okay. Test that. It isn't needed. What? Am I not using this correctly? I don't think I'm using this correctly. Primitive slice, okay. Uh, not yet, Sarian. I'll figure it out. But thank you. Oh, so control S does a test. That's convenient. Mod sword activate. <laughs> Mod sword activate. Active. Yeah, no back. I should probably add the uh, tag no backseat coding. Uh, edit stream info. Uh, no backseating. Done. All right. No backseating today because I'm doing katas. Unless I ask for it, I guess. All right. Um, what's the mismatch type? Oh, am I not returning it? Yeah, original. All right, just to be quicker, actually, I don't want to use this browser at all for searches. I am going to um, look up um, uh, Rust, Windows, um, and that exact error message, because I'm not going to be the first one or the last one to ever run into that, right? No method named Windows found for reference string. It's got to be someone else who's run into that. No method. How come I can't type? Uh, okay, I just can't type today. All 
So I guess I can just cheat and look, not cheat, but look at the, where I actually used this before. Uh, not here. Where did I use it? In message headers? Is it a, maybe I do have to dereference it. So I have to like do that. That would be kind of cheesy, but you never know. So string slice doesn't have windows. Well, windows is a method of um, slice though. But maybe I'm misunderstanding slice. Is slice... Oh. String slice is different. Okay, then I have an idea. Let's do... Um, well, I can't... Then I can't do slicing that way, can I? I could slice it initially. Let song equal... Um, Song dot cares, and then this would work, I think. Um, collect into a vector. Because why not? Okay, so then down here, I suppose we'll just do it this way. Can't type. Test. Okay, yeah, and then the push is wrong. I need to um, collect them, don't I? This is probably a horrible way to do it. Hey there, Mantis. Watch me do a um, horrible job at Rust Katas. <laughs> I need to reassemble that, don't I? This is going to be ugly. Well, I could just do it this way for... Um, J in I to wub original push song J that should work right cannot borrow original and yeah, we need to mutate it I always forget that um because I'm just not used to doing that still The A got cut off. Oh, hold on. Um, I forgot to advance A. Or, I mean, advance I. I equals wub plus one, two, three, right? So that needs to be mutable again. Okay. Why did it push an extra space there? Oh, and the C got cut off. So I need to be having an extra one at the end here. Or I can include it at the end. What is the type of wubs here? It's going to be an iterator. Ah, uh, I don't know what to do about this other than this is going to be horrible, but okay. <laughs> well. You can just say while i is less than, um, you know, 
yeah, I can just say for J in I to the length of the song. Oh, I need to push, I need that part in it somewhere. Mm. If I is less than song length. Ah, yeah, it's this editor's killing me. What about the trivial case where there's like no song? Uh, not worry about that. Yeah, it's still putting a space in front. I'm not sure why. And then put two extra spaces there. Oh, probably because, um, it's, this is the wrong case again. This should be, um, if I is less than wub. Okay, so I just have the extra space in the front that somehow got in there. So that's this first case, right? Oh, if st starting off a web is zero, right? I should say something like if original is not empty. You know, it's kind of irritating to be out working in this tiny little window. Can I? Okay, I guess I can do that, yeah. While I'm working. Took me long enough to do that, huh? There should be this also. And then reduce and test. All right. At I'm just going to, I don't like my solution to this, so I'm just going to attempt it. Okay, let me submit it and see what the right answers are. <laughs> okay, let's see what the answers are. Okay, yeah, now now I feel humbled because that's, a one-liner is much better than my solution. <laughs> Fail fish. Okay, so s split it by wubs. Right, to treat them as delimiters. Yeah, that's a much better solution. Okay, so what do I learn from this? I jumped, I leaped right into a solution where I just use windows. And I don't know why. Yeah, this is, um, I should recognize that wub is, is a delimiter. I think maybe I didn't see that right away because I usually think of delimiters as single characters. Yeah, maybe I wanted to flex my knowledge of windows because I learned it the other day. Yeah, so this is better because really what was a delimiter in this case, and it wasn't something we were searching for one of. Yeah. What are some other solutions? Regex? I don't really care about regex. Oh, I see. There's another function here. So again, this is again splitting by... Is there anyone who has a solution that doesn't involve splitting off of the wubs? No. I'm I'm the weird one who um, got caught up on not splitting. Okay, here's the replace one that Endurn came up with. So you replace it with spaces and then split white space. Oh, is that to collapse together adjacent white space? That's, that, that's what's missing, Endurn. Your solution originally where you said um, just replace wub with space, as long as you then collapse the white spaces, it would have worked. And, and then this is just the trailer part to collect it together and and form words out of it. Yeah. Oh, you can't, uh, mods can't add commands, but I can. So I'll just do that and um, give you a point. It's been years since you've done Code Wars. Yeah. My brain went, went must use window. Yeah. Can I put a comment on my own saying like, I, I'm really embarrassed about this. Can I can't comment, put a comment on my own code. Well, that's a bummer. I want to like say, Hey, um, yeah, I was dumb here cause I had just learned window and I wanted to use it. I guess I could, no, uh, here we go. 
Leave feedback. Uh, maybe because I had just learned about sl slice windows, I immediately jumped into that as the key to the solution uh, without realizing it's uh, much better to, to simply treat wub as a delimiter and split the song by it. And then I'll put like in front. I'll put a fail fish. People will know what that means, right? Post. Of course someone used regex. Yeah, the regex, I'm not really interested in regex solutions because I feel that it's not, it's, it's pulling away from the programming language and just like using regex is like a, as like a bludgeon. Hey there, Ronald. Brazil. Do you have anything else to say other than Brazil? You give yourself a back pass. I'm not going to give my, this is a, can I give myself a worst practice point? Can I downvote my own, my own thing? Can you do in place shift down? Uh, that ends up doing a copy or a move. It, uh, yeah, you can. I think. But still the split solutions is just more elegant. Yeah. Thank you for the follow. So, how satisfied am I with this kata? It's none, but it's my own fault. So, maybe I should say very because it taught me something. I'm very happy because it taught me that I was wrong. Okay, let's move on to, the, to a new one. Maybe I'll do better this time. All right. Okay, so in a small town, the population... Is peak zero is a thousand at the beginning of the year. The population regularly increases by 2% per year. More over 50 new inhabitants per year come, come to live in the town. How many years does the town need to see its population greater or equal to 1,200? So you add 2% plus 50, and it just accumulates. You need three years. Okay. Function NB year should return N number of year, entire years needed to get to a population greater or equal to P. Og. What's Og? Og. I hate it when people use terms like shortened terms. What is Og? Am I just blind? Oh, Og. Oh, Augment, I guess. The new inhabitants per year, they didn't use, they should have used the word augment first before they just dropped into the aug. From the example, they actually say the word augment. Yeah, they never even say the word augment. I'm just supposed to assume aug means augment. All right. <laughs> Fine. Maybe the feedback to this would be, please use the word augment before you use the abbreviation AUG. <laughs> What is augment? Augment is to supplement or add on to, right? So, um, define augment. Make something greater by adding to it. Increase. Yeah, a non-native English speaker, speaker might f struggle on that saying, what does AUG mean? Anyway, maybe we give feedback to this kata about that. Hey, they, hey there, dc -er. Oh, wow. A bunch of people jumped in that I didn't say hi to. Naragera? Hello. Liquid Plumber? Hello. Pata Still Papa? Hello. Of course someone used Regex. And Exotic. Yeah, I didn't say hi because I was working on a problem, right? And I was just la laser focused on it. Raises Augmenter. Makes more sense in French, actually. I Suppose, yeah. Okay, so it's... I, I'd never liked functions that um, you have to look at the signature to figure out what they mean, but that's okay. Um, that's the initial population, that's the percentage increase, that's the augment, and that's the populations that are surpassed. I get it. Where's the button to start it? Uh, train, here we go. 
All right. So, I think we just do this while... Well, let's say... I don't like the variable names. I can change the names, right? No one cares about this, right? Surpass. Well, reach. Or needed or something. Augment. P0 is, I think, is clear. Then we can say... No, Siri. I'm not talking to you, Siri. <laughs> Goal? Goal's a good one, yeah. Uh, let P equal P0. While... P is less than goal. There's probably a more mathematical solution. I don't care about math. I'm an implementer. <laughs> um, we just do P plus equal uh, P times percent. Actually, why don't we convert the percent to let um, uh, growth equal percent divided by 100 F64. Do I need to do that, or is that in? It'll just it'll just convert that for me, right? Times growth. Ah, uh, plus augment. Is that it? Can't divide. Yeah, okay, I th was wondering if maybe I had to do that. Okay, and this I'm gonna need to truncate, right? Do I need to say like that as I I thirty two? Okay, as F sixty four. Oh, what do we to return? I need to re. Wait a minute. What am I returning? I'm returning an integer. Why am I returning an integer? Oh, it's a number of years, right? Why is it an why is it not an unsigned? Shouldn't that be a u size for that? Oh, where did my um overlay go? There it is. Why the first let? Because p0 should be a constant, right? This is also should be mutable. I don't want to reuse the name p0 cuz p0 implies population at year 0. Whereas here, um, we're, we're in, I need to actually track that. Uh, let years equal zero. Years plus equal one. Again, make this mutable before the compiler tells me it needs to be, and this should be years. Yeah, this is going to be cha changing year to year, but this is a constant. Um, I'm bothered by the fact that they have a signed integer um, result, but that's okay. You know, I'll live with that. All right, attempt... Passed all the tests. This one was much easier than the last one, wasn't it? To me, because I got tripped up on 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 the pro, on the it being a delimiter. You reached the goal three years ago. <laughs> You're doing some of these the other day. Yeah. Hey there, turn forever. Um, CM Griffin actually recommended that I try this out. He said he thought I'd have a lot of fun and learn stuff, which I have. I've learned that I need to recognize the. Um, Multi-character delimiter is better. <laughs> Turn forever. Hello. Silmith, how are you doing today? Augment obviously is a past tense marking prefix in a few ancient Indo-European languages, especially Greek, Indo-Iranian, and Armenian. Huh. It's the kind of thing Musen would try to do in a single iterator call. Ah, uh, could we do it that way just to be, just to be, uh, iterator happy? I can't, I can't think of how I would do a while with an iterator right now. I'm not good enough at iterators. Start doing event code 2019 like that, stopped at 13 or 14. Who, um, Musen? I got all the way through to like day 22 or something like that in Advent of Code. I, I'm looking forward to Advent of Code 2020 for um, Rust. All right. Did I submit it yet? Let me see. Should I clean this up at all? Uh, let me put here 
The return value ought to be u size because it doesn't make se any sense to return a negative number here. Uh, let's say Swift Rage in front. There, there's my com there's my social commentary for this kata. What else do we want to say? Um, I have also taken the liberty. Well, let's not return. Also, I've taken the liberty to rename the arguments. Well, to give the well, it's the parameters, right? Parameters. And I was never sure. Do you say arguments or parameters when you're talking about the um, na the um, these things? These are parameter. These are, are are these arguments, and then when you call it, it's a parameter. Anyway, no need to get nitpicky. I've taken the liberty to give the parameters sensible names. <laughs> Interchangeably. Musin Musin is uh just really really good at what of what they at what they do right. Okay, anything else I want to clean up here? Probably want to say something like, uh, we don't mutate p zero because well, the name implies year zero. I'm putting that comment in there because someone asked about why did I have this initial let. Uh, and then I'll say percent percentages are for humans. Computers work better with ratios. Well, that's not the right word, right? It's um when you divide a percentage by a hundred, you get to what you can just multiply by. Is that a ratio? I guess it's a ratio and floating point. A ratio as a single real number, you know. I, I didn't. I didn't get all A's in math, <laughs> decimals. I don't know what the right name is, but we'll go with with that. Okay. Can I clean the years up? This is where maybe if I, if we had a if we turn it into an iterator, I could just count the number of it, right? But I'm not going to do that. And the reason we're doing that is to truncate. Should, can I be more clear about that? Is there a truncate? Or a trunk? Oh, here we go. But it returns an F64. It would be cool if there was a trunk for float that returned an integer. Should I be more clear about that? Should I say this dot trunk? Test that. Uh, did that actually test? No. I think I w will keep that trunk in there, even though we don't need it, because it's more clear about what we're doing. We're truncating it. We're not counting fractional people. You call them decimals because they're decimals. Honestly, feel it. Like trying to write it with an iterator would just make it less clear. Yeah, but it would be fun. <laughs> it's too bad I don't know how to do it yet. Rationals. 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 It's like ratio is only a little bit more national. And yeah, hello and thank you, Sif School. I'll give you a point. All right. Some surely someone did in the answer, answer, so we'll see. Yeah, I think I'm just beating around the bush too much. Is there anything else I want to do? Eh, it's fine. Let's just um test attempt submit. What do other people do? Yeah, see, th someone else did what I did. They even gave it a better name, pop, instead of p. P is more mathematical than pop, though. Then multiply. Okay, they call it multiplier. Uh, what is... What's this one as... Oh, I see. They're, instead of doing um, accumulate, they're doing an assignment. So they have to... Um, the one is the, uh, is the previous year's population. But they did the, they did the divide by 100 as well. And they, they called it counter... It's the same thing. It's essentially my solution with different names, right? 
Or uh, what else did someone do here? PP. I don't know why they call it PP. Oh, because someone left that. Yeah, that's a ridiculous name for a goal. P. No. It's it's like, it would be like P final or P, yeah, like some kind of sub or superscript to note what you want. Or just goal. Goal is better. Um, there's another way to divide by 100, but maybe not as easy to read. That's fine. But essentially, it's the same solution, right? I want to see this, if anyone has the iterator one. PN, yeah, there we go. PN would be better. It, it, yeah, I liked goal. That Wasn't that your idea anyway, Endurn? <laughs> Return P0 is greater than P... All right, we never... Okay, that's just the triv catching the trivial case. Would my code catch that? I think so, because the while would just not go in. Else 1 plus NB year... Oh, it's recursive. Oh, that's cool. That's the recursive solution. But it's the core of it's essentially the same, right? Yeah. I don't think there's any way any way to get around that. Oh, here we go. Here's the iterator solution. I'm it's not unnamed. We know who that is. Come on, Musen. You gotta say who you are when you we have to give you credit. This is obviously Musen's solution <laughs> with the iterator. Um position. Oh, that's interesting. Position for an iterator stops early. It's like a find, I guess. Oh, yeah, look at that. Searches for an element in an iterator returning its index. So it's searching for the population in the... If you iterate the year, the population's year to year. Finds the one where it's greater than. I actually kind of like that because it illustrates how you can um, make an infinite iterator and then... Um, to search it to terminate it in a, at a finite location. I don't like the unwrap, though. I think that's a little gross. Why do we need an unwrap there? Because there's an option? Right, but for an infinite iteration, it'll never be none. I guess there... Yeah, I guess we have to unwrap then. <laughs> don't think you need iter tools for that? Maybe this is an older version of Rust. You know, people might have learned Rust before 2018, right? Yeah, I don't think in... Well, let me... Th actually, how do you form an infinite iterator without using... Uh, can you use an unbounded range for that, maybe? Like zero dot dot? Now I'm kind of curious uh, if... Uh, it's okay, I don't want to spend time on it. But that's cool. All right, um, these are all the same solution. Cool. So there's like basically three solutions. The one I did, which is the seems to be the more popular one, the iterator solution, which is the Musen solution. Um, I hope he doesn't mind me uh, associating him with iterators, but he's really smart with that kind of stuff. And then there's the um, recursive solution. Okay. Next kata. Write a function that accepts an array of ten integers that returns a string of those numbers in the form of a phone number. Okay, that seems simple. Let's do it. All right. All right, fine. So wouldn't we just say... string from numbers 0 through 2 plus that plus numbers 3 through, um, this should be, th I should just do inclusive so I don't, um, confuse myself, right? 3 through, uh, 6 plus numbers 7 through 10. When that, when that just, that would be it, right? Test. Trait bound string from is not satisfied. Convert from is not. Oh, yeah. These are these are um, bytes, so I need to um, convert it to a string first, right? Uh, let um, numbers equal. Uh, a string, can I do string from? 
UTF-8 numbers. Unwrap. Let's do that. Mismatch types. Ex uh, oops. Oh. Um, I need to... Uh, really? It needs a vector? It won't work with the slice? It needs a vector. What about the slice form of it? Okay, I could do the slice form of it. So, standard str test. Um, why is it ex seeing a character? Oh, yeah, I can't do that. These have to be um, strings, right? Just in case people are giving me answers, I'm not really looking at chat until I get this. 11 is out of bounds. Am I off by one? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, no, this is off by one. 6 through um, 9, right? Test it. Oh, I didn't convert them back to characters. Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, they want area code and junk in front? Oh, also, I did, yeah, I didn't convert it to character. Okay, so there are a couple more things I missed here. So, um, why don't I just do a map then, r rather than doing this junk? Um, actually, I'm starting to think maybe I can do an iterator approach. Maybe not, though. Uh, yeah, let's just do a iter map and to, um, can I do this? Can I say zero plus n as care? I don't know if you can add characters. We'll find out. And then, um, I guess I'll just collect it as a vector of characters. And then I have to um, change this a bit. It has to be f string from that plus that. And I need to add that. All right, try that. I missed a delimiter somewhere. Line six. Oh, yeah, there. Can I add a character or a character? Dang it! <laughs> um, I suppose I have, to, I have to go the other way, don't I? I have to say, like, n plus... Uh, zero is what? It's um, 48, right? Is it going to complain about it needing to be U32? Okay, no. It Oh, yeah. Okay, so maybe not collect into a vector. What if it just collect into a string? That would be nicer. All right, cool. So, should I clean it up? To clean it up some like area code this is very US um, biased isn't it uh, what is it called the next set of three numbers it's like a switch prefix or something <laughs> maybe I don't need to do this maybe just like uh, line these up or something. Okay. Let numbers equal numbers. Iter map. And n plus 48 is character. Collect into a string. I'd, see, if I could think about how to do away with the collect 
and then reaching back in as a slice. So it, it would be some kind of clever way to do it as an iterator, right? I th let's do it. Yeah, I think I, I might see a way. Yeah. What if we do it this way? This would be kind of fun. So we would say, um, again, map, well, enumerate, and then map i and n to some fun. Here's the fun, right? So the fun is, if i is 0, then it is, well, let's just do um, a match i. 0, then it is um, string from, actually, what if we just make them iterators? So it would be um, the array that, arrays of characters would be nice. Uh, n is, let's make that C. Well, no, n's fine. Because it's an, it's a, it's a, it's a digit. Actually, D is, is, digit. Let's use the full name. All right. Um, so then, um, what are the other special places where we have extra syntax? So two. Digit. And parentheses. And a space. And then at five, we have um, a digit followed by a dash. Otherwise, it's just digit. And then I'd um, uh, fold. It's not fold. It's called flatten, right? Yeah. Isn't that the more fun solution? Let's test it. Uh, okay. Why did it expect a semicolon there? Match arms of incompatible types. They do? Oh, they're arrays. I need to make them um, into uh, slices of arrays. Will it let me do that? Oh, and that's the different type right there. This has to be like that, right? Why does it want me to add something there? Probably because of these other things. Match arms have incompatible types. Um, okay. I don't want to fix size. What if, can I say into iter for these instead? That's what I really like, because that's what I intended it to be. Into iter. I'm kind of shooting in the dark, but I have some reason to suspect it would work. Still mismatched types. Expected string found unit implies it. Okay, if there's something to do with a semicolon here that I'm missing. Is it some missing syntax around here somewhere? Can I not collect these together into a string after I flatten it? All right. I'm kind of frustrated at the lack of IntelliSense, so I'm going to add, um, I don't know. I can add this anywhere, right? Let's just add a new test RS into a random project and just paste this here. Okay, yeah, why are you expecting a semicolon? What's the type of this, then? Oh, it's because of the let. Ah, ha, ha, ha. How come I can see it better in... Um, VS Code than I can in the, this editor here. It's that. That's what we're missing. Can't return value referencing temporary. <gasps> Dang it. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I can just force it with a hammer. Um, vec. In front of all these. Hammer. Apply hammer vec. There we go. <laughs> Brute force to the rescue. Unnecessary memory allocations. 
Okay, can I clean this up without the unnecessary memory allocations? I could probably, f like, just do a chain here, right? Like, I really, what, what I want to do is form, is form iterators on the fly. So this one I can, um, this, that one's easy, right? Uh, that's just, um, I forget the name, I forget the names, though. Okay, I, c I guess I can look at chat now and catch up. Maybe you guys have already given me hints about how to clean it up. Uh, where was I? Extra point for um, S F W F S Q L. Sure. Another point because it's their first one. Greetings from Brazil. Hello, people from Brazil. Well, people is great. Okay, we're the. I'm I'm still back in chat where we we're talking about the last kata. You can use format. I can use format. Hmm. Yeah, don't worry, Liquid Plumber. Um, I was purposely not looking at chat just in case people would, were accidentally giving me answers. What an odd way to represent a phone number. Yeah, that's how the U.S. does phone numbers, even now. Hey there, Crumpet. How are you doing? We're talking about the input not rather than the output. Please explain a bit further. Uh, if that was a question for me, I'm not sure what you wanted me to explain further. So I'll go back to if it if you let me know. Oh, you're saying explain further format? It'd be, I think format would be nicer than concatenating a plus there. I see what you're saying. Yeah, we can do that. But then I went to the iterator approach, so now I can't use format anymore. <laughs> yeah, they're different types, yeah. Care from digit exists? I didn't know that. And hello, Frosty. How are you doing? Also, I should say hi to Metro Dev. Hello. And um, Viga, hello. Delete let numbers equal. Yeah, that was the solution to my problem. Hi. Uh, okay. You do with an iterator without collecting. And eventually, I do need to collect it into a string, though, right? Because that's what they want. If I do the iterator approach. But yeah, if I do the format, I guess I didn't need to do that. This week in Rust 360, quote of the week. Just because Rust allows you to write super cool, non-allocating zero copy algorithms safely doesn't mean that every algorithm... Yeah, but what's kind of cool about iterators is at least the way it visually lines up for me that I can kind of see how we're doing it step by step. We're saying, hey, enumerate or iterate the, the numbers, map them from digits to, to, to characters, then we're going to enumerate because that means because I'm sensitive to the position in the iter in in the sequence, right? So if the positions are zero, two, and five, we have some extra syntax junk to add in, right? And then how this kind of lines up is kind of neat. You can see like the special cases and then the default, and then at the end we flatten it all and put it into a string. I think it's I I just like the way it looks. Um, I think it helps me to understand. This might this maybe is a really contrived example because like what you guys were saying before with format probably is a better way to do it, <laughs> but I really wanted to have fun and turn this into an iterator thing. Now, the to to win the iterator challenge, I think I need to do this without doing the memory allocation here. I just need to know how to make ad hoc iterations. Iter that's what it was. It was iter once. Thank you. I would probably probably found it here, right? Like iter once with chaining. Isn't that gonna look ugly though? Shouldn't there be you know what would be cool? What if there was an iter that just did it for you? Right? And that this isn't really allocated on the heap, but it's a macro, and then this maybe would just form an ad hoc iterator using once with chain. Oh, every arm is going to have a different type. What if in the end we like flatten it or something or turn it into the, the same type regardless of what came before it? Could you do that with like chaining it with with nothing? This would be cool if it existed. It probably doesn't. Mm, probably doesn't. Wishful thinking. Yeah, anyway, um, maybe I just, call, maybe I just give up and say, yeah, vectors into iterators. Yeah, it's fine. Submitting my final solution. 
Yeah, here's the format solution. But they still had to... Oh, you can do it. Oh, I didn't think of that to string. I just... I'm used to just doing... Um, if it's a single character, just putting it into the ASCII myself. But I suppose... Well, won't to string allocate a memory for that one character? This is doing unnecessary... Unnecessary memory allocation! <laughs> Uh, this is interesting. Couldn't you do that with some kind of iteration? Hmm. Yeah, this is... All right, it's, you can do from digit. Someone in chat said that, right? I could have done it that way, only I just rolled my own. And then that's that's from digit with the format. Oh, okay, this is with a range. This is similar to my approach, only it's pushing into a string instead of um, doing collect at the end. But it's a similar kind of match, right? At positions 2 and 5, you have extra junk. Did anyone do a crazy iterator solution like I did? That's hardcore. Look at that. Look at all those plus 48s. You go, plus 48 team. Oh, this is interesting. Slice to string. This seems needlessly complex to me. All right. Um, well, it works. Yeah, it works. This one's an, a better solution because they said the word numbers. Yeah. Okay, no one else had the crazy iterator-only solution that I had. Hey, here we go. It's iterator only. <laughs> okay, let's catch up in chat. I think it's still heap allocated. I think you can do something like, yeah, with the chaining of them, yeah. You do character from digit, yeah. But you'd have to, you'd have that ugly unwrap. Ooh, unwrap. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty obscure to you. Get normal mapping, Kappa. I see. String with capacity, someone there was conscious about the allocations. Oh, was there one there? Yeah, because you know the exact length of the string. Ah, uh, let's find it. With cap. Oh, there it is. That's the uh, team plus 48. Wait a minute. Should it be 14 or 13? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It should be 14. They're off by one? No! Right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, it's 14, not 13. Should I write here you're off by one? It's a uh, string's 14 characters long. One, two, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah, it's fourteen. Bash their micro optimization in the covets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nah, I'll be nice. They're off by one. See the problem that's one of the problems with, with capacity, right? You won't know if you got this number right because it's subtle. You if you ran it and you instrumented how many times it allocated memory, you would see it like might have allocated twice instead of once. Alright, let's move on. When do I get to six Q? Um I was very satisfied with the with that one. That was fun. Next kata. Sum of pairs, given a list of integers and a single sum value, return the first two values, parse from, from the left, please, in order of appearance. Return the first two values in order of appearance that add up to form the sum. Oh, right. So it would be like three, seven. There we go. You wanted to see another way to use the iterator, shield my eyes? Well, if I shield my eyes, I can't see it. Are we telling chat to shield their eyes? Okay, chat, shield your eyes. If you don't want to see, I'm going to open it in the in this browser, actually. Oh, I didn't think of that. I should have done that instead of doing 48, right? That's cleaner. You go, Sarian. Extend, take three. Oh, you're consuming the digits. Uh, that's, I don't think that that's such a bad idea. 
this part isn't using an iterator though. You're only using the iterator here. <laughs> oh wait, no, no, wait a minute. You're right. Digits is an iterator, but you're using the iterator imperatively, right? By taking. Okay, I can see why you said shield your eyes. That's that's not a bad that's not a bad example actually. I give you a point. You were expecting unsafe. Yeah, I know. Yeah, shield your eyes because it was in light mode, not dark mode. I guess. All right, so this is a more interesting one because we might have to do this kind of a search, right? Four plus three, no. Four plus two, yes. Oh no, we have to return the first two values, and so would the answer be four two? Yeah, it would be. Hold on a second. I gotta be right back. All right, just a little bit of coordination about school pickup. Okay. Why do they bother to... Is this just to illustrate that you have to start there and try? Okay, there are no pairs that can be added. Ooh, we have to deal with negatives. So we can't, we can't just stop at 11 because there might be a negative 1 in there. That's good to know. The entire pairs are there. There we go. So we have to be conscious about both the um, left and the right. Hold on, then. What do they mean by earlier? In order of appearance. Entire pairs. What about if they overlap? Okay, I guess my interpretation of this is that entire pair is earlier. The definition of that is that the end is earlier or the beginning is earlier. No, beginning is later. No, it has to do with the end then, doesn't it? Okay, uh, wait a minute. I don't get th I don't get this. Look at the asterisks. Yeah, they're saying that that's earlier, but why? Why is this earlier? This started earlier. It started earlier but ended later. They're saying that this entire They just are, I don't get it. I don't get it. Help. <laughs> it's the pair that ends first. Okay. So it doesn't matter where it starts, it's where it ends. That ended first, before these two. Why is this making noise? Okay. I don't know why I had such trouble with that. I think it's because they use entire. But that's not entire, right? That's, they're saying that the end one is earliest. Yeah, strange wording. I get tripped up on wording. There will also be lists tested of length that's upward of 10 million. Be sure your code doesn't time out. So that means we're going to want to do it order n, right? So we'll only want to go through once. Let me think about this. This is harder. Bash their wording in the comments. <laughs> that's okay. It's my problem, right? Let me think about how to do this, though. It's only two numbers. So we can reject we can reject ones. Well, if I think about it, if we're if we first search, we're holding on to candidates, right? So we'd um for like for this one for example, we would hold on to ten because we need a zero. Then we would see the 5, and it's like, okay, that doesn't work with the 10. But it, but 10 still might be the answer. We need another 5. Now, we're hold, now we look at the 2, and it's like, well, that could be the answer. All of these could be the answer, actually. 
Wouldn't we want to search from right to left then? No, I'm wrong. We want to search from index one onward and then no, I want only, I only want to cover it once. I'm bad at coming up with algorithms. This is an algorithm test more than a Rust test, isn't it? Fundamentally, when we get to the 7, we should see that it completes with the 3. So I think I, what I want to do is hold on to a hash map, right? And stop at the first one that matches. What am I supposed to return? Yeah, I'm supposed to return a number here, right? Wait, I don't, it doesn't need to, um, it doesn't need to say which three though, right? So we could just put these into, um, we can put it into a hash map and we can say when we get to, and when we go from, when we hit each number, when we hit the seven, it's going to be like, is three in the hash map? Yes. Then, then we're done. But okay. So hit 10, you'd say is zero in the map. No. Five is five in the map. No. Two is eight in the map. No. Three is seven in the map. No. Seven is three in the map. Yes. Stop. Okay. I think I got my algorithm. So train, here we go. So... Use standard collections hash set actually right, and we'd have um let uh scene equal hash set new, and then um for uh i and in ints um yes. If we get down to here, it's gonna be none. If Scene dot, uh, I forget the names of the methods. Hash set, please. Yeah, I'm, I can't look at uh, chat right now while I'm trying to solve it. So I'll catch up with chat in a little bit. Um, contains, there we go. Thank you for the follow. If scene dot contains S minus I, then it's some S minus, uh, S minus I, I. Otherwise we put it, otherwise, um, we say, um, scene dot insert. Just the value, right? Insert I. Is that it? Let's test it. No, unnecessary parentheses, what? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't do that right. Um, that should have gone there. Mismatch types. Oh, was I not specific about the type? Is it gonna say it um, doesn't know what the type should be? Mismatch, okay. I don't like looking at it in there. Let's look at it in VS Code. Okay, in order for that to to even compile, I think I just need to cheat and do a pub use test. Uh, no? Wait. Oh, um, sorry, uh, mod test. There we go. Oh, that's a reference. So on these all, I need to um, dereference it. Right? I ate random state? Yeah. Okay, so... um.
Why can I not do that? Uh, let's not give me the answer. <laughs> S is an I8, right? Why does it expect a ref? Oh, it wants if it wants a reference, duh. Okay. So then um let's just make it easy on myself. Let difference go S minus I. Do I even need to do that? I don't need to do that. If it contains the difference, then it's some difference I. Uh almost. Why did oh um I need to do a return. And this needs to be mutable, yes. Alright, good. I got it. <laughs> Test. Alright, should I clean it up? Oh boy. Is this gonna time out? No, it didn't time out. Probably because they tested it with a 2 million element array, right? Yeah, the address of S minus I should work, but that's just easier in my eyes. I don't like seeing the address of something in parentheses. I think that's good enough, right? Do I even need to do the dereference there? No, I don't need that. I don't, unnecessary punctuation be gone. Uh, can I get rid of that? That I do need. Okay. Got rid of the unnecessary um, punctuation. Four issues reported to this kata? Interesting. Can I look at that without abandoning my... Let's just submit it and see. I'm interested to see what the issues are with the... Um... Oh, I can't see the issues anymore? What? I unlocked a new privilege. You have the ability to estimate the ranking of your own beta kata. All right. Let's so catch up in chat now. Look at the asterisks. You should shush yourself. Yeah. It's just the pair that ends first. Yeah. They're saying that the entirety of the pair is earlier. It ends earlier. Yes. It is strange wording. Can you get negative points? No. But be careful about giving yourself points because um, that actually nullifies all your points. That's a bug. I don't remember if I fixed it. Maybe I did. Don't anyone test it, though. Is it possible to be at... Um, yeah, maybe that's the issue with this code is that there, this, this could easily um, underflow, right? That... Yeah... You could feed it some input where it will underflow, right? And panic, I think. Should return as soon as you have a solution. That's what we're doing. Oh, some new people dropped in and I didn't say hi. Everex, how are you, how are you doing? Middle click to open a new tab. I didn't know that. You click train again, you get back to that page? Okay. Oh, Papato said, Papa, you gave a point? I'll give you, I'll give you a point back. Then, then it's all balanced. Hey there, Lord MZTE. Since when does Code Wars have Rust? Yes, a friend of mine told me that it now has Rust. That's why I'm trying it out today. <laughs> and Fab, a 1-1, one, one, a 1-1-N, one, one hello. I didn't see where you're... Oh, they're up there. You said you should return as soon as you have a solution. Yes, and hello. The invasion of small cubes! Ah! The invasion is here! Hello. Okay, let me look at some of the other solutions. Isn't this exactly what I did? Isn't that my exact solution? You got 47 best practices. I'm happy. I... Okay, that... Actually, I liked that better. Um... Because then they don't have to um, dereference I anywhere. Okay, that's a good point. Can I give a point to them? Can I upvote them? Yeah, let's upvote them. They have the same solution. 
How do I, is there any, there's no way for me to say, hey, that solution is the same as someone else's? It doesn't even say, like, who did it first. For all I know, th White Oak looked at Nomic Flux's solution and said, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some karma farming and just take their solution and repost it. Okay, they did what, um, Nomic Flux what, did what I did and computed that once so they didn't have to repeat it in the two, actually they only used it once there. Oh, no, because they, then they, um, decomposed it into some and none. Interesting. So they used a match instead of a contains. It is slightly different then. Yeah, this one's a little bit better, I think. Although they could have pre-computed S minus I. Shame on them. They're gonna l rely on the compiler to do it for them. Ooh. This is interesting. This is the old school hash set. This is um, doing it um, because you know that there's only 256 possible values for the type. Just say, hey, let's just allocate 256 bytes and we'll just um, index it like a vector. I wonder if that's faster. That might be faster. Clever? Let's give him a clever point for realizing that. Some pairs. Okay, this is the um, slower solution, right? Probably, that's probably what someone said. Oh. How did they get it in there without it passing, I wonder? I thought it had to pass to get in there. Anyway, um, how do I collapse that? I collapse that. There is no way to collapse it. Moving on. Would have inserted the difference in the set instead of the scene value? So then you don't have to do the subtraction every round? Well, yeah, that's probably more... That's I would have given you a clever point, Endurn. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This That's why I gave him a clever point, because how I, I don't think it's possible for the hash to be faster than this direct memory lookup. The only the cost is 256 bytes, so if the hash map takes two, less than 256 bytes f to implement this, then it would win on space, but not on speed. But this would definitely win on speed, right? Especially because this is all going to be in one cache line, hopefully. So they're... Um, It'll never actually make it to RAM. It'll just stay in, in the in the cache. Dr. Padawan, you subscribed for three months in a row. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Or do that. I don't know. I'm assuming I shouldn't do that. Russ has a built-in macro bench framework. I haven't gotten into that yet, so sure. But I don't I haven't looked at I don't know it yet. Ooh, someone's iterating here. That you don't need to do, right? Wouldn't they get a warning about that being implicit by four? Doesn't a four always do an... A four does an into iter, right? This is slightly different. I think you'd still get a warning about this, right? Out of curiosity, let me see. Should get a warning about that. No warning? I would expect a warning here because you don't. that's not necessary, right? That's, uh, maybe Clippy's off for this file. I don't know. Anyway, put it back to my answer. It's kind of normally you solve the hash set, but doing some rest is not passing the timing requirement. Really? I passed the timing requirement. One can use a 256-bit array. Oh, that's even more clever. You only need, um, eight bytes then, right? Or 32 bytes. Wait a minute. Why 32? Wouldn't you only need 8 bytes? No, I, I don't know math. It is 32. <laughs> yeah, so isn't there something in Rust now you can do a bit array? You don't have to do the shifting yourself? That's even more space efficient, but it, it, but it re requires some shifting around. Yeah, and I just can't do multiplication right now. Okay, beating this to death, let's move on. Nah. Oh, we wanted to look at the issues, right? Let's look at the issues. I'm curious. Uh, one issue is it took forever to look at the issues. Wait, now it says 47 issues. Didn't it just say four? 
Wait, what? It said four. Now it says 47. Four issues reported. And I click it, and it says there are 47 issues. Okay, yeah, this website has issues of its own, right? All right, and I'm, I'm not going to get caught up in this stuff. Let's just move on. Can I move on? Can I go back? Next kata, please. <laughs> four is 47 with rounding error. Off by 43. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Eight times eight times eight divided by two. Yeah, exactly. Hello, zero fee. I like the name, zero fee. And Doctor Padawan, you resubscribed, but I never said hi. Hello, evening. Yes. Okay, so if you don't know what I'm doing today, I thought I would do some Rust katas on Code Wars because a friend of mine told me that Code Wars now supports Rust, and I was like, sounds like fun. Let's try it out. Two tortoises named A and B, those are nice names, must win a race. A must, oh, must run a race. Starts with an average speed of, of something. B knows they can run faster than A and has not finished her, their cabbage. When she starts at last, she can see that A has some amount of lead, but their speed is faster. How long will it take? This is like a algebra question, right? Given two speeds and a lead, how long will it take B to catch A? The result will be an array hour, minutes, seconds, which is the time needed in hours, minutes, and seconds. Round down to the nearest second, or a string in some languages. Or a string? Okay, I guess it depends on the language. If V1 is greater than or equal to V2, return none. None is the only true, only true value here in Rust, right? <laughs> or negative, ah, negative ones, ah, re, should be none. Okay, I'm I'm getting too much into Rust, aren't I? Okay, f so yeah, don't we just use basic algebra to solve this? So it's like um, the distance. It's two equations, right? It's like um, and it, the the variable is time, right? Yes. There's a note section. I always remember to read everything just in case. Yeah, I messed up that way with admin of code by not reading the notes. See other examples in your test cases. In Fortran, oh, <laughs> the turn string is not permitted to contain any redundant trailing white space. Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> Those are hints about how to convert to hours, minutes, and seconds. They don't care about fractions of seconds, of course, because they're slow animals, right? Think of calculation by hand using only integers. Yeah, we can just do it in seconds, right? Why do we need to do decimal? We can just convert it from feet per hour to feet per sec. Oh, no, that's not a that's not a good way to do it. Um, train. So what are some sample tests? So uh, what in COBOL? I don't know. Maybe they support COBOL. Freedom units. <laughs> oh, the third one's the lead in what? feet <sighs> right the distances m match right so what am I trying to do here I'm trying to go to this window here the variables are v1 v2 so v1 times um, x equals uh well that's we're equating the distances right equals um v2 times y plus no we have to put the lead on the left hand side g 
so then um I would um uh solve for X. <laughs> Don't remember how to do this stuff. <laughs> um when I just divide by V one, so X plus G over V one equals X times V two over V one. X uh What am I doing? I did it wrong. I th okay, I I'm... Watch Rhyme with Screw Up Algebra. Yeah, my kids are watching me now. <laughs> I heard that. Okay, X equals XV2. All right, so... um, It would be XV1 minus XV2 plus G equals zero. And then... um. Uh, X times V1 minus V2 plus G equals zero. So X equals um, negative G divided by V1 minus V2, right? Let me put that to the test here. I can just flip the signs, right? G over V2 minus V1. So, um, it's the units that I have to be careful about. That's feet per hour. It's all in feet. Okay, so in terms of hours, right? So let's take this one where it's exactly two hours. Did I get the answer? 40 divided by 20 is 2. Yes. Okay, so then... Um, this one's about half an hour, so 70 divided by... Uh, calculator, please. 850 minus 720, because I can't do math in my head, is 130. 70 divided by 130. 130 is that times 60 is 32. Okay, so I got the equation right. That's the equation. Lead divided by the difference in velocities, the fast one minus the slow one. Okay. Got it. So then um, it's just a matter of the units, the unit conversion, right? So then um, let... It's going to be in hours equal... Um, yeah. If, I, if we do it in seconds, though, it would be... Um, yeah, let's so this is in hours. So if I wanted to put in in seconds, it would be that times 3600 seconds, right? So then I can just take that and multiply by 3600 and then divide by that. Seconds equal um g times 3600 divided by v2 minus v1. Okay, and then um we need to see how many hours does that fit into. Hours, this is total seconds. Hours equal total seconds divided by 3600. And then let um, minutes equal total seconds minus, well, total seconds. I guess I could just mutate this. That's, I've done, done it this way before, right? You can just say um, seconds equals seconds minus or mod 3600 and then um this is just then easier it's divided by 60 right yes and then seconds equals so this can be reduced with mod equal right mod equal 60 and then um oh it's an option i have to be careful it may might it might be um Dividing by zero, right? Or V two might actually be slower, and then they never and they never make it. So, if V two, if V one is greater than or equal to V two, then it's none. Else, actually, let's just do early return. It's easier on, on me. <laughs> then I can just say down here, um, some. Hours, minutes, seconds. Let's see if I got it right. No. 
Three were supplied. Oh, I I, for, I forget that a lot of the time. That one is a tuple. You have to have extra parentheses. Oh, they want it as a vec too. Okay. Why do they want it as a vector? Don't they know it's always going to be three things? Silly. Silliness. Vector. There you go. Test. Attempt. Now, can I make it um, cleaner in any way? Don't mutate. That's true. Why mutate? Why mutate when I can let? I have to be repetitive, though, in saying seconds equals seconds, but that's okay. Because that works too, right? Yeah. I sometimes get that wrong too, Everex. Actually, I had to stop and think about that. Do, does that mean DB60 instead of 3600? You can do it by 60 if you do it f backwards, if you do the minutes first and then, and then, and then um, collapse the minutes. That might be um, like that, and that, that. That's just an alternate way of doing it, right? So that's one way. The other way would be to do minutes equals seconds divided by 60. And then you do mod 60. And then you have to do hours equals minutes divided by 60. And then minutes is minutes to mod 60. That would get you the same answer, wouldn't it? but maybe not as easy for some people to understand. Yeah, I get the same thing. I don't know, maybe that's better because I don't have to say 3,600. Well, I still have to do it there, though. I don't know. <laughs> so you weren't wrong. You're just thinking about it with the other way. Is this, is this easier? Let's see which way I like better. Well, if I order it like this... Then we divide twice. No, I don't think I can I do that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, that works, right? In fact, I can build these into that. Yeah, then I don't even need the lets. Maybe this is better that way. So this is um I can at least get rid of these two lets. Minutes mod. There's the percent key. There it is. I didn't hit the right one there. So I don't need that. And then it kind of looks like we're doing seconds, minutes, hours. And I can even... Uh, well, let's leave it like that. Or should I make it look fancy with a match? Nah, I'll just leave it like that. I spend too much time trying to make it look fancy and stuff. Submit. Let's see what other people did. Yeah, that's what I did. And they did it without uh, assigning variables. And they did, an, they did the division in line. Okay. That's my solution, isn't it? Oh, except for that. Uh, that's a little bit overboard. And crazy um indentation there. What happened? What happened with what happened with their indentation? My god my goodness. Okay, this is parentheses hell. Uh what? Yeah, someone's having too much fun with floating point there. That's my solution. I was about to do that, but then I kind of prefer the early return because then you don't have to indent all that stuff. Okay, catch up with chat. Can't be freedom if they're called imperial? I see. So the lead divided by the relative speed difference, yeah. So I'm just not as good with math. Yeah, I should have asked I should have asked my kid to solve it for me off stream, right? They can't be on stream because of house rules, but they could have done it off stream for me, hint hint. 
<laughs> you could have solved the algebra for me. And then, no? I guess they have too much work to do right now. <laughs> they said it's my job. Okay, shadow it. Don't mutate it. Yes. Round down to end. Yeah, and Dorn had the correct equation. Times 60 times 60. So I got rid of it the other way, which is just to do it backwards. Uh-oh. Who, who's threatening the house, dog? Who's threatening us? <laughs> Don't encourage the dog to bark. <laughs> Supposed to see who the enemy is. There obviously must be an enemy about to invade us if there's um, the dog is barking. Where is my solution? I kind of lost it in the mix. Ah, here it is. Oh, uh, like to get rid of that, we could multiply by 60 twice. Indent random. <laughs> oh, hey there, Mr. Balrog. We on we use only pronouns as our names in Among Us. You know what I did in um, Among Us when I played it? I, we, um, we named ourselves Dumb Guy 1, Dumb Guy 2, and we had to have the dumb sticker on our head. Or mud, if you prefer. If you face to the left, it's mud and not dumb. How are you doing, Mr. Balrog? And Razor X, I guess you arrived this round too? Or did I for just forget to say hi? I don't even see where your chat is. Where is it? I see LLXOR, hi. Am I gonna have to search through my own chat to find it? Yeah, I'm gonna have to search. Okay, why am I not seeing it? There it is. No, it's not there. There it is. It reminds me a bit of Fry and Lori's sketch. How are you doing? Never played Among Us? And Doran, you should play with Ski Dog and, and, and me. Because you heard the angry dog barking? <laughs> is it, was that you, and Doran? Are you walking by the house? Okay, moving on, right? John and Mary want to travel between a few towns. Mary has on a sheet of paper a list of distances between those towns. John is tired of driving. He says to Mary that he doesn't want to drive more than a certain amount of miles. He only visit three towns. Uh oh, is this the traveling salesman problem? Which distances, hence which towns they will choose? Wait, which distances, hence which towns they will choose? Wouldn't, shouldn't this be will they choose or should they choose? This is an odd way of saying it. So the sum of distances is the biggest possible to please Mary and John. Biggest possible? <sighs> but John's tired of driving. Why would they want it to be the biggest possible? Shouldn't this be the smallest possible? I, I, don't, I don't like this. Next. <laughs> Reject that one. You're given an array of strings and an injured K. Your task is to return the long, first longest string consisting of K exit. What? Yeah, I, 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 I just, I, when I reach two or three things that just irritate me about it, I'm like, I just want to move on. <laughs> you're given, uh, thank you for the follow. You're given an array of strings and an enter. Your task is to return the first longest string consisting of, what does first longest mean? That seems to be contradictory, right? Is it the first or is it the longest or is it, how could it be both? Consisting of k consecutive strings taken in the array. What? First longest. Oh, I see. As in, if you consider the strings from the beginning of the array. So, like, if you can use zone to make the longest out of two segments then go for it otherwise you go to abigail and um then you um look for the first one that'll make it the longest how come you can't why can't you do abigail abigail
Warte. I, I, I don't like this one either. Next. Middle Earth is about to go to war. The forces of good will have many battles with the forces of evil. Different races certainly be involved. Each race has a certain worth when battling against others. On the side of good, we have the following races. Okay, got I got the worth stuff. Got the, okay. All the weather, location supplies, blah, blah, blah. It's up to you. If, if you add up the worth of the side of good and compare it to the worth of the side of evil, the side with the larger worth will tend to win. Thus, given the count of each of these races and the side of good fall by the count of each of the races, it will determine which side wins. Hold on, what? String of multiple integers. Okay, so these strings are irrelevant then, right? Uh, so in this, we expect to see only numbers? Okay. Why bother having names? Is that just to make it fun? I don't need fun. <laughs> Yeah, the backstory. Why do we need the backstory? That just—I think it's just to make it interesting. It's really just a w weighted sum, right? Okay. <laughs> this is just being—you know—actually, I kind of approve of being silly, so that's fine. I'm gonna need these strings though, because I'm not gonna be looking at this screen when I make them. So, um, I need that string. I need that one, and I need that one. So it looks like I really only need that string once. And... You know what I'm going to do? I'm not even going to work in this anymore. I'm going to be working here. So... What's the string going to be? Why is it a slice? Oh, they want to give me... Um, okay, so I need to parse it first, right? I need to split it by spaces. So um, let good equal good dot split space. Um, that's actually... We, don't, we, can just, we can just zip these two together, right? So yeah, why can't I just do good split on that and then um, map to, um, uh, I always forget the, the name of the function, but to, to go, uh, it's like parse, right? No, it's um, not parse. From string? Yeah. So I can just like do like use size from string and unwrap it, right? So um use size from string. Uh let's do it in one closure. So um I don't know, N N unwrap. And then I can just zip it, right? With the, uh, with evil. Zipping good and evil. The same thing. Are the worth values the same in the two sides? One, two, three, three, four, ten. No, they're not the same. So I need to maintain those separately. And that means I can't zip them either. Uh, but I could zip it, right, I'm supposed to, I should be zipping it with the, um, with the worth. So that's a constant, right? Uh, const, um, good worth is 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 10. Evil worth.
six. One, two, two, two. Three, five, ten. All right, and so um, zip with um, good worth. Ah, uh, what am I thinking of? Itter? Sure. And then um, I'm going to want to um, uh, fold, right? The initial value is zero. The function is um, n worth n, well, there are two things, right? It's um, uh, total, or good, n times worth. It's good plus n times worth. That is let good equal that. Okay, from string doesn't work. Oh, I have to do, I have to do use. Use, uh, what did it tell me to use? If I have a syntax error, it won't tell me. Standard string from string. Okay, use standard string from string. As that. I learned that trick last night, actually. If you don't want this in your namespace, you can just do as that, and it kind of hides it. All right, so then what is the type here? I32. Ah, uh, sure. I'd really like it to be U size. Uh... I'm kind of surprised it told me it was an integer, though. Oh, because the from s no. What, what, why is it? Why is good here? Oh, because that's not a u size. That makes sense. All right. So then I can just do the same thing with evil. Um, in fact, I can make this a sub function, right? So, uh, like count or something. Function. Um, uh, determine worth or something. Evaluate worth. Um, what's what name do I do use for good or evil? Uh, counts is a string, and then uh, worth is a reference to a u size. <gasps> Resubaka, sixteen months. Thank you for the resub. I um I can't look at chat note now because people might be giving me the answers, but um I am today doing Rust katas, so like little programming challenges in Rust uh, that are on the Code Wars site. So this is going to return a U size, right? And I can just drop my little bit of code in there and get rid of the let. And instead of good, it is counts. Instead of good worth, it's worth. And remove the semicolon. And then I can just say um, match uh, evaluate worth good, evaluate worth evil, and I have to do good worth good, uh, evil worth. And so N, well, G, E, if G is uh, greater than E, then, um, okay, so this should be um, string from battle result, right? Uh, plus this match. This, let me uh, fold this so we can read it a little bit easier. Good triumphs over evil. G, E, if G is less than E, is evil eradicates all trace of good. Otherwise, no victor in this battlefield. Isn't battlefield a single word? Uh, these need to be referenced, right? Cool. How come it says I don't use these? Oh, because it doesn't know that I used this. Okay, so this should just work, right? I hope. Test. 
Uh oh. Why am I getting a warning? Should I have uppercase? Yeah, forget that. Uh, well, actually, not forget that. Yeah, this, I really should uppercase these. Is it um, that they want snake upper? I mean, um, not snake upper, upper transformed uppercase, right? Uh, did I not hit all the spaces? I didn't. Um, it didn't convert the other one. Okay. Okay, so no warning. I just get a test failure that... Um, oh, there's a space missing. <laughs> test. There we go. Attempt. Do I want to clean this up at all? I like my iterator solution. Why am I getting a warning here, though? Single character string constant used as a pattern. And they suggest what? What's the quick fix? Try a care? Oh, okay. Fine. <laughs> a character it is. Interesting I got a warning there. It must be a clippy warning that they don't lint for here. Attempt. All right, let's submit it, and then I'll look at chat. All right. Oh, I've unlocked a new privilege. Now I have the ability to weigh in on the ranking of Beta Kata. Okay, and I've ranked up. I have ranked up to 6Q. Look at that. Impressive. Thank you. <laughs> okay, let's uh, catch up in chat. Wow, there's a lot of chat while I was, while I was working on that. Uh, okay. All right. Hey, the the Mary had a little lamb. Good one, Mister Balrog. If there. Okay. Yeah. The chat was initially about the two that I skipped, right? Yeah. So I, I just wasn't. I for one reason or another with those two, I was just annoyed and I wanted to continue. Return to the land of Nern with an array of integers. <laughs> <laughs> String iter to digit reduce total plus is that what I ended up doing? I did Ah, uh, hold on, let me see if I can compare side by side. I did num parses u and three instead of two digit. And see if it, it can never be negative. That's why I was intent on making sure it was all. Um, this is not even my solution. Why am I looking at that one? Look at look at this one. That's why I always use all u sizes because they can never be negative. Uh, but yeah, let me catch up in chat and then look at other solutions. Similar to JavaScript reduce. That's what fold is. Fold is a um, JavaScript, uh, the same as reduce, where this is your initial, and then every, um, this function is called for everything in the iteration, and um, the first parameter is the is the accumulator. Like, it starts at zero, and then it becomes the result of the first call. So that gets folded back in as the initial, the input of the second call, and so it just, it, it's accumulating. You know, fold, um, reduce, same thing. You can use parse t as well. Oh, because of the impl I could I could have made it implicit, so I could have said. Oh, instead of from string to do, I could have done parse. Yeah, that I still haven't gotten a good feeling for when to do, when to use parse and when to use um, from string. This one. You use, um, it's either, it can be implicit or you can use the uh, turbo fish. And the way I did it, you don't use the turbo fish. You put the, it's, you flip it. You put the type on the left. Hold on, let me catch up to chat first. I saw someone added me. 
Oh, parse is a wrapper around from string? So why would I use one or the other? Like the short, on the population problem, you just made a simple iterator. Okay. Yeah, I think one of the solutions that I saw was also using an iterator. Hey, it's Raimi. Wowee. How are you doing today? I'm doing katas today, yes. Is it Saturday for you guys already? Wow. Everything are two words in English, but everything is one word. Seems quite strict and fun, yeah. There's the link, yep. What would be a negative? Yep, someone's subbing. The epic unknown 17 months? Oh my goodness. Thank you for the reset. What would be a negative count on undead? It would be a liability, wouldn't it? <laughs> Either cat peasant. How are you doing today? Just use parse. It uses from string underneath. You don't have to import it. I see. So um, I just need to get into the habit then of doing n.parse. And then the turbo fish use size. But in this case, I wouldn't need to do that, correct? Because it knows I'm going to use a use size. I can just say parse. No, it map doesn't like that. It says what? Type annotations needed. So I do need to use the turbo fish there. All right. So then I don't need that. All right. So I, I, I need to get into that habit. Parse, not from string. Because then I don't need to import the trait. Yeah, I, I, I um, don't look at chat while I, I don't look at chat while I'm doing these katas because sometimes people say answers. Parse doesn't need to use, and it will probably infer the type. Yeah, well, it didn't. It didn't in that case, but I can see how, and if the context were to provide a, a uh, enough of a hint to the compiler, I wouldn't need the turbo fish part right here, right? But. Here, unfortunately, map is like, I don't know. I don't know what you want me to um, return. So <laughs> it doesn't look far enough ahead to see that we're going to be giving it to. Um... Actually, I guess it's because it could be other types that would work with addition with uh, a U size, right? Anyway, I'm still trying to c catch up. Maybe use from string for generics. I see. So I would use this if I know the exact type of from string if I don't. Can you use like a T there? Maybe even with a generic? I don't know. Doing okay. I just felt like doing this uh, Kata's challenge now because CM Griffin, well, shout out again, told me about that Code Wars has Rust Kata's now. I had a look at my website. Looking good. I tried to make it professional. <laughs> it's past midnight already in the Netherlands. Wow. It can't infer the type even though you... I think it can't infer the type when I do this because it it's sort of ambiguous what the type of um, N could be to make it fit, right? I guess you could have some kind of conversions or promotions. So it needs to know that the N's coming in here are U sizes. Even though, yeah, goods are U size and so, so are worths. Anyway, I'm almost caught up with chat. According to my overlay, it said you Google the time for Netherlands. I didn't see that, but okay. You can zip two different sites. You're thinking of chaining. Oh, right. Is that, is that why we can't let it imply? Because zip says, oh, well, they can be different types. If zip required both sides to be U sizes, then maybe map would be okay. Not uh, would get the type inference, right? Okay, good. All right, let's move on. We've beaten that one to death. Oh, wait, no, I wanted to look at other people's solutions. Uh, what window is that on? This one. Function eval. That's sort of what I did, right? Split by white space, enumerate. I didn't enumerate. Why did they enumerate? Oh, because they, they didn't use zip. So this is a solution where you use enumerate with um, index instead of doing a zip and fold. So instead of uh, fold, they use a sum. Yeah, okay. I kind of like fold though. I I like fold better than sum for some reason. 
Although some might be more explicit. So here you have to you have to see that we took the accumulator and added it to added something. If I yeah to re instead of doing a fold, I could have done a another map and then done a, did a sum right. So I could have just a map from that and then sum. Actually, I think their way is better because that's clear that we're summing together the elements that we add to. Yeah, I like theirs better. Index access boo. Yeah, so I like, I'll take from their solution the sum part, but I like the zip better. There's, the problem is that um, the worth has to be the same length. With zip, I think it stops on the at the first point where they, um, whichever one is shorter, right? So you could have no um, wizards and it would still work. Like you could just drop it off of the string. Their way they would, um, or no, the other way around. I could have extra kinds of things in the string and it would stop, whereas theirs it would go um, out of bounds access. Looks like, so I made them constants and they built it into the function. It's pretty much the same, right? And I could have done like this actually, right? To not have to say the size. Someone taught me that trick the other day. You can drop the size off of that if you do that and then I don't even need these, right? So that's maybe another improvement I could have made there. But their match is the same as mine, right? Only they were repeated the string in three places. Unnecessary repetition, whereas I had it in one place. Although you could argue that um, this causes a, um, two memory allocations, one for that string and another one to um, extend it. So maybe theirs is better, I don't know. With their solution, it doesn't even need to be a string. It could have been a slice. With mine, it um, has to be a string. All right. Anybody else have a different solution? Okay, this is just redundant. I noticed that right away when I was doing it. I'm like, I don't need to be redundant. Otherwise, it's the same. And they even used a const. They didn't do the, the trick that I just did. So they had to count the size sizes themselves. Oh, they used comp. Should I have done that? This is more explicit, saying good has to be greater than evil, rather than saying compare good with e evil and say greater than than good wins. I like my way better. I think I like my way better, although there are some advantages to doing comp, right? Uh, you don't have to say that, or the more explicit would be good evil if good equals evil. Oh, that, that won't even work? Because it's not exhaustive. Because it's not smart enough to see it's exhaustive. Okay, so that's maybe another advantage of their way. Is they can be explicit without having missing arms. Because they can go through the, the all the variants. Whereas I... Um, oh, and this does two comparisons. Okay, their way is better. Because you only need to do one comparison. So to improve on mine, it would be um, match this compare with this. Um, that. Which is a little bit unwieldy. And that has to be a reference. Okay. Right, so then this, is, this whole thing is then ordering great... ordering what? Help me out here. Greater? Ordering uh, less? Ordering equal? Do I need to put like standard comp in front or, yeah, or better yet, just use it? And this is equal, right? Yeah. Okay. This is like uh, keeping with the th uh, role playing, isn't it? 
Same kind of splitting and mapping and parsing, though. Oh, there they actually zipped them. It's interesting to see that, like, they did everything I did, but they didn't see to, um, uh, what am I trying to say? They didn't, they didn't see that they were being redundant. Good win. That's interesting. Have a battle result. Wow, look at that. They even implemented display for it. And then you had a trait? Wow. <laughs> Code explosion. <laughs> they had names for the various things. Did they parse them? This is like, you know, p bonus points for, for role-playing. Definitely. Okay, gotta love that. Again, the redundant... The redundant code there. All right. It's an interesting to see other people's solutions. It's a lot of double code, yeah. Over-engineering crushes all the sides. I got to say, like, I got to give uh, a comment to this one. It was this one, right? No. It was really this one, which was really elaborate. I got to give this one credit. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> no, I'm going to comment saying I, I give you the most bonus points for keeping to the theme. Roll, keeping to the theme and, um, and role play. Post. All right. Do I want to keep going? It's 3.22. It's been two hours. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, we want to say we're very satisfied with it. Because that was kind of fun. I, I, even though it might be kind of silly, I, I like that they had um, the, uh, the fantasy role-playing or whatever um, theme to it. Next cut up. Good night, Mr. Balrog. Okay. Write a function that takes a string of braces, determines if the order of the braces is valid. It's to return true if the string is valid, false if it's invalid. It's kind of similar to the valid parentheses, but introduces new characters brackets and curly braces. All input sh will be non-empty, only consist of parentheses bracket. Oh, I see. I've actually had to do this before. Yes. Yeah, I've done this before. It has to do with having a stack my solution would, and just uh, making sure that when you get an end terminator, it matches what's at the top of your stack, and then you pop it. So maybe we'll try that same technique. All right. Why does it add space there? Weird. This was an interview question of yours? Interesting. Okay, so um, I'm going to have... Um, a stack. Which we can just use a vector for that, right? So uh, let... Uh, I just call it stack. Equal vector new. And then... Um, if we get to the end, it's true. We're going to early return if we find a violation. So that means it's it's a good place to do an iterator, right? So s dot cares dot uh, uh, map, right? Actually, I can just keep it all in one line. Map a character to all of our... Uh, no, we don't need a map. I can just do four. Four C and cares. S, can, do I even need that? Dot cares? I do. Yes. Hey there, Tim. We're doing katas in Rust today. Tim Bodet is an awesome streamer. Whether you like watching him doing uh, racing on his computer, or working on racing games, or describing how to do indie development, the entire business, everything about it, it's a great person to check out. This is a good kata? I hope so. So, um... Looking at the characters, I think we would just want to match them, right? So uh, if it's 
parentheses or bracket or curly bracket, right? Then we're going to stack push C. Uh, C doesn't have context here. I have to... Hmm. Oh, I should also use the other trick here. It's all... Okay, it's not a reference, so I don't need to do my trick. Um, do I have to say C if C equal? It looks kind of gross to me, but I guess we could do it this way. Uh, this has to be mutable for that to work. Okay, and then... Um, I guess it's easiest... To, hmm, let me think about this. Like, can I combine them all together? Or would I... I need to match them somehow, right? Wouldn't it just be easier to have these be separate, like that? We'll see. I, I'm already thinking about ahead about how I might remove the redundant code. Uh, if stack dot uh, first, oops, match stack dot first. Stack dot first is going to give me an option, right? Right. So if it's sum that then um what continue nothing if it's anything else no if it's if it's another character Uh, I can do it this way, right? Sum C if C is that or C is that. Um, I'm doing this backwards, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, what if I just say if and then this is false? This is true. Otherwise, it's false. Uh, uh, return false. Hey there, beer stain. I really can't look at chat too much because people might be giving me the answer. So I'm doing what's called a kata, which is like an exercise uh, programming challenge on Code Wars right now. This is going to get ugly. I think what I want to do is kind of match things up. Uh, can I just make a hash map? Map Mapping these? Yeah. I kind of feel like doing that. Use of if expressions wasn't a suggestion. <laughs> Use standard collections hash map. Let. Uh, what are we going to call it? Uh, match? I can't use the word match. Use um, complement equals uh, I can collect this into a hash map if I do it this way, right? I can say this collect Do I even need to give it a type? If later, no, I think I do need to say it's a hash map. But I can make the type implicit. So I can say um, that matches that. Actually, do I want to... I want to make... I, actually, I think I want to have both directions, don't I? No, I don't need to have it both directions. Okay, so then um, these are our sets and, and their matches. Oops. Uh, tell me that I can do the collect. Collect exists, but I need to have... Oh, I need to iterate them? Okay. There you go. And I cannot collect them into a hash map. Why? 
I thought you'd give him pears to, to make them. Expect at least two found one. Oh, uh, yeah. Figure them both out, please. I still can't collect. Come on. You're killing me here. Hash map cannot be built for an iterator over elements of type. Oh, do I need to, um, do, uh, copied? Yeah, a little trick there. It wants values, not references. So copied turns it into, um, uh, a value, a, uh, an actual tuple, not a reference to a tuple. Cause this is iterator is going to give me, uh, references to these tuples. This is, I, this turns them into values. And, um, and we can do that because they're all, um, simple values. They all support the copy traits and then collect them into the hash map. It works for me. Okay. So then, um, then I can just say, see if complement, let's, let's make use a different, what, what did, what word do they use to describe this? Braces. Okay, they use braces. Sure, because that's curly brace. That's square brace, I guess. And that's parentheses brace? I don't know. All right, so then... Um, okay, so th I should have C... Uh, I forgot to fill this in. Contains C. Do I need to reverse this, actually? Oh, I think I know what I can do. Oh, no, okay. It contains them. That's the, the left column. How do I match against the right column? I think I do need to reverse it. It's not too costly, right? Um, braces. I, I have no... Uh, I'm not good with names. How about we call it open braces? And I'll have uh, closed braces. And why can't I just zip them together at the end? Yeah, why don't I just do that? Dot iter, dot copied, and then open close braces. Maybe that's not, not the right word. I don't know if it should be closed or closed. That's the wrong one. Okay, so let uh, braces equal open braces dot zip close braces. I might need to clone the open braces in order to get this to work though, right? It's probably going to say it's been moved. Uh, this should be open contains found for oh um yeah i want to turn it into a hash hash map hash map hash set i don't know this might be overkill Uh, I don't. I don't have a good feeling about this. <laughs> uh, collect hash set. Probably people are like, "What the heck are you doing?" All right. Yeah. Then I can do that. So see if close braces contains. C. Then it has to match. Otherwise, if it's another character, then do um, nothing. Here's the match stuff, right? All right. So it has to ma It has to um, match it. So ma if match stack first. Yeah, I'll, I'll clean this up in a second. This is just the way I think about it in my head. So, uh, this should be... Let's just call this braces mapping. 
and this needs to be collected into a hash map from something to something else. Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is take the what's on the stack and map it and see if it matches. Some see if braces mapping C equal, okay, I need to have another one. Um, let's say, let's actually give these names open. This is close. So this will be some open. If open, the mapping is close. Then, um, then it is not an error. If it is anything else, right? Then it's true. Hold on. Oh, right. I need this because it, it could be none. I don't like how I did this. Uh, I should just have... Um, I should just do that, shouldn't I? And that be the arm. Yeah, I had a feeling that it would not like this because it's been moved. So I need, I just need to do a clone. When in doubt, clone. So clone and then zip and then collect. All right, so let's see if I got it so far. Go through all the characters. If... You find an open brace, push it on the stack. You find a closed brace, if... You find a closed brace, take the top of the stack. If there's nothing, then we're gonna say that it's, there's a problem. If there's something, then it's okay as long as the mapping from the open the the open brace matches the closed brace. Okay, and if it's not either an open or a closed, we just skip it. Okay, so then um, I also have to pop it, don't I? I need a side effect here. Yeah, if... I don't need parentheses here. Uh, Stack.pop. True. Else, there's got to be a more elegant way of doing a side effect. Than that. Someone's going to tell, someone in chat will tell me about a, a way to clean this up. <laughs> okay. Then at the end, it's only if the um, stack is empty. Stack is empty. Uh, let's see if I got a working solution. It's not the cleanest, but maybe it will pass the tests. Why did we get false on that? So, open brace will contain it. It will push it on the stack. Then the next character will be the closed one. Yes. The stack first will be some open brace mapping from open to close. It should have popped it and did true, which... Oh, this is backwards. Uh, yeah, that's backwards. 
which means that this, that's a code smell. Ooh. Okay. True. But, 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 but. Wait, what? Is it giving me a different test vector each? Oh no, I typed this in wrong. Oh, it added characters while I was typing it. Jeez. Yeah, that should be valid. And then, and so now what's going on? I mean, it should be pushing three on and then popping three off, right? And then it's empty, so it should be returning true. I peaked. I shouldn't have peaked. I w it would have taken me a while to figure that out. I'll just give you a point. I, sh I shouldn't have peaked, but yeah, you're probably right. It's I have it backwards, don't I? <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking of it as a stack, but it's really a vector. Yeah, that was it. Should have, how long would... Oh, no, there's more. But how long would it have taken me to figure that out? So I got true for that. Oh, right, I didn't match this case if it's empty. This should be true. This means that there's not the stack was um, blown. Okay, how long would it have taken me to figure out on my own that, that should be last, not first? I don't know how long that would have taken me. I just assumed that that was correct when it said first. Okay, so now can I make this more elegant? I like that I can do contains because that should be quick. But maybe I don't need the mapping here. But I do, right? Otherwise, I'm going to have a lot of repeated code. Can I collapse this if somehow? This is just a, having a side effect, but then passing along a Boolean. And then this having this if match is kind of awkward too, right? Okay. I will approve that one. Let me let me go back and look at um, chat. Where do we start? You two like if statements in your match arms? Oh, I need to go even farther back. Uh, how far do I need to go back? Okay, we'll say hi to Danny Fritz. Seems like a good idea. Yeah, I think my algorithm was right. I don't know my, about how I wrote the code, though. And the Epic Unknown, hello? Match is the equivalent to a switch statement. It's both a switch statement and it yields a value. So um, these are the values that get, um, uh, that become the, the result of this as an expression. That's why I can use it with an if. So that's why this is sort of a code smell to me to have an if match because the way you have to, the way it make the way the the compiler would interpret it is this it does the innermost expression first so the outermost statement and then the next level in is the match and then the next level in for that is um, after figuring out what this is then it has to follow one of these arms just like the cases of a switch statement only we don't have breaks because you can't fall through from one to the other because that's sort of a controversial design decision, right? So in Rust, they don't fall through from one to another. You only go through one arm, they call it, instead of a case. At a, um, you only go through one of them, and they ha the arms have to exhaust all of the alternatives. So that's why I have to say, um, I have to have a none true there, because it, it can't just fall through to a default. Anyway, um, so it's kind of hard to read, because you have to do compute that first, then match it with one of these patterns, 
And then when you get a, a final value from that, that becomes the value of the entire match. And then you, you evaluate if, if it's true or false, you go into the um, block or you don't. So um, there's got to be a way to clean that up. Maybe someone's already told me in chat. Uh, I didn't say hi to Tim, although I did shout you out. Let's see. Uh, that noob, hello. How are you doing? And PhD Horrible. Did I not say hello to you before? I thought I did. Uncle Bob would faint looking at that code. Yeah, my code always looks horrible the first pass through, especially on new stuff. KV. Oh, for the when I was collecting into a hash map before. Into iter for arrays has some warnings, you think. I don't have that anymore, right? I refactored that while I was doing it. You can use vec as vector simplicity to call iter. I see. So I could have done a vec here. That does make sense, right? No, no, I wanted those to be iterators. Because I eventually collect them. I, but I do need a clone of the iterators to form the mapping. If I made them vectors out here, um, wouldn't I have to, wouldn't I still do, a, I would allocate memory for the, for the vector, but then I'd also allocate memory for a hash set, and then I'd be stealing the values from the vector, wouldn't I? Anyway, um, you don't need the original values, they're only temporary, so into iter makes more sense than borrowing them. Actually, does into iter allow me to get rid of the copied? Now that I think about it, does that work? Oh, there we go. Except for this. Because these types are wrong now, right? Uh, yes, so... That's an iterator of characters, correct? It showed me that somewhere. That's an array of characters. Iterator of characters, that's what these are. And then this is what? Ah, I see what happened. They became references somehow. How did they become... Re oh, 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 oh. Uh, do I need to do into iter? Wait, why would I need to do that there? This doesn't make sense. They are references, though. The way I, so that this way they weren't references? Huh. Is that just the way that the copied type works? I bet that's what it is. Okay, I'm going to move. I need to catch up in chat first because people are telling me things. This is over-engineered? Of course it's over-engineered, PhD. We over-engineer things the first try through. Kills the crab? Yeah. It's just the way I think. I don't think in terms of the best solution right out of the box. I get something really rough and then I try to refine it. I think that's just the way I code. Okay. Um, there's no into iter for arrays. It calls into iter for slice. Uh, yeah. The subtle different the subtleties in that I haven't quite gotten down. You desire an if let. Oh, so like if let sum open equal that. Otherwise, what? Actually, I don't know how I'd write it yet. But yeah, consider if let here. Get an e-print line instead of the code for value debugging. Oh, that's true. Stack class, that was the critical one I gave a point for. Don't know what the if match gets you. Seems like an if let would be better. Maybe it'd be better to read, yeah. The destructuring switch expression, yeah. Mm-hmm. To remove the if, you can early return the false in place of the true cases. Actually, I think I like that a lot better. Why do I carry it all the way out only to return it here? So why not just say, um, in these places, return false? And then I can just re reverse that logic and do that. And then, um... I don't need an if at all, right? Then the match yields nothing. 
And um, can't I furthermore... Actually, having this be a block with another if means I, I don't need another arm. Right? So I'm going to keep that. That ought to be a... It doesn't matter because the overall thing of the match is a, a unit, but... Um, yeah. Okay. This still works, right? I've refined it a little bit. A little little tad. A little bit better? No. I've broken it. How did I break it? I broke it somehow. Remove popping of the last value. Oh, is that what I did? <gasps> You're right. Thank you. Give you a point. So I do need that case. All right. That's a still, a, still a semicolon. Um, what? Why is this an error now? What's expecting a bool? Oh, because of this if, yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. All right. Test. All right. Should I do an attempt again? Attempt. All right. This is so nice to do in Haskell. Not sure if you can share links in chat. Sure, you can share links if it's relevant. Especially, uh... Since you asked, I just appreciate being asked if it's okay. And then, yeah, sure, go ahead. It's the unsolicited links, especially unsolicited links that are like completely irrelevant, that are kind of annoying. What was this kata called? It's valid braces. So we're making sure that the braces match and all that stuff. Reading the messages out of order. I thought I was reading them in order. Now I'm reading them from back from... Now I'm reading them in reverse order. Tim says, can you share a link to the drawing? Sure. You can, of course you can share the link. Oh, that's what I'm reading out of order. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. You can share the link, Tim. And if, uh, who is it? PhD Horrible can also share links. <laughs> But Tim Tim is allowed to share irrelevant links because Tim is a VIP and another streamer. So, what's the status? Oh, neat. That's be better a better drawing than I could have ever done. So that's one of the things when you're a solo game dev, part of games is doing art. So, yeah. Way to go, Tim. I can't do that. And then what was the other link? It was, um, oh, the link back to um, the current kata. Yeah, thank you. That's what you linked, right? Just the current kata that you're on, or did you link to something? Oh, it's telling me, I okay, I, I can't look at an answer because I haven't done submit yet. That's why. Yeah, that's what my kids tell me, too, that I could do art. I just need to to do the, put in the time and effort. I don't know. <laughs> I suppose I'll just submit this. Oh, no. I wanted to see, can I improve it anymore? Did I miss any chat, though? I don't think I did. I got rid of the gross if match. Okay. You know, I think I'm happy with this. I'm just going to go for it. Submit. That's my solution. Let's look at other people's solutions. So, yeah, stack, same approach, right? Um, won't this panic? Doesn't pop. Oh, no, pop. I didn't know pop actually returned an option. Okay, th their solution hard codes the matches, whereas mine lets it um lets you um keep them at the top and maybe have it extensible so maybe they're 
Mine is easier to extend, but theirs is more efficient. What else unnecessary did I did did I do? They oh they combine the pop with okay I just didn't know you could do that I'm used to, in C plus plus you can't you have to do top and then you can do a pop I didn't know you could do a pop and look at the result okay yeah it returns an option and it doesn't crash if there's if it's empty okay I didn't know you could do that so there you go I learned something. You can pop and expect the result. So if I were to apply that lesson to mine, I would just do a if stack, well, wouldn't it just be match stack pop? And then I don't need this and make that a not equal to. Oh, except for I need, uh, wait, what? Oh, um, that, right? No, that, there we go. Competitive coding, make it work, skip the rest. I'm, I made mine work and now I'm looking to learn from other people's solutions. So what else did they do here that I could learn from? They do the if not equal to. That's just done in a slightly different way. Oh, I see what they're doing. They don't, you don't need the th that. Oh, I still need to do this mapping though. But I could have done stack pop directly in there. Because the only place I use open is there. Oh no, no, I can't. Um because I I can't index it if it's not a brace it would it would panic. Yeah, so because they can hard code it like that they don't need to do a mapping. They hard code its mapping there. Okay, yeah, that's that's the difference. I have to do a mapping because I kept it generic somewhat. They hard coded the mappings directly in there. Okay, anything else? Um, they have a panic invalid input. I just ignored it. I guess that's a defect in the question that they didn't say what you should do on on other kinds of input. Oh, that's clever. You just push its complement. Ooh, I like that better. Question specify it's always valid input, so this is just extra then, right? And then, um... I need that to satisfy the match, but yeah, this you will never hit this. Okay. Yeah, I've seen other people do that too. I guess that is better than saying vec new, right? I actually like vec new. I don't know. I'm on the fence. Who? What do you guys like better? Vector macro with empty or vec new? I'm on the fence there. If you guys hear the flute in the background, that's my son playing, practicing the flute. All right. When I'm not talking to the noise gate, should cut it out. Vec new nine out of ten times. <laughs> Team Vec new. <laughs> okay. Okay. Th there's two people now who actually just push the compliment. What? How would that improve here? I wouldn't need to do this comparison. I wouldn't need to do the mapping there. I think it's just equivalent, right? It's just, it would just move where we do the mapping from there to there. Yeah, it would. That's basically the same, and they're hard coding it. Okay. Drop. Oh, that I, f I forgot about that. 
Yeah, if you don't need the um, the actual value, right? Isn't that kind of redundant, though? Yeah. I want to see if anyone else had this idea of um, making it more generic. Karama? What? Curly bracket paren? What? Uh oh. I dropped some frames. I'm dropping frames. No, the train frames are being dropped. I dropped like 238 frames. The compiler won't warn if stack pop wasn't used. Yeah, that's what drop is for, right? This says cool uh compiler be cool or don't don't fret that we didn't use the value because they essentially did use the value with last right that's what i w was doing before i realized you can just re use the return value of pop so what are they doing here with grandma shift left oh it's a memory efficient stack This will only work up to 32 levels, though, right? Because they only have room for... S and why do they make it signed? Who does that? Doesn't that have in, like... Isn't there some rule about it being, um... Like, when you do bit shifting with signed numbers, that some operations are undefined? Anyway, um, I would I would always use unsigned for when we're shifting like that. Anyway, I don't know why I randomly critique people. Yeah, bit flags and assign it. Yeah, that's it. Just, I think it's clever. In fact, I'll give them the clever point for um, using a um, an integer and as a as a uh, stack. It has the thirty two level limitation. the The only the only thing that taints it for me is that it's signed. Yeah, essentially, it's the same, right? It's just that they've encoded the stack into a number. Which is very memory efficient, but has this thirty-two level limit. Did the did the original question say that there was a limit to the depth? They don't say, but they must have gotten it. They must have. Um, they must not be any things that go deeper than thirty-two levels. Otherwise, this would not have passed, right? This one doesn't even check. So that that if I'd be okay with this clever solution if we did a check to make sure it didn't overflow. Well, I guess Rust checks it and panics. Okay, I just dropped another two hundred frames. Call stream quality is going between red and yellow right now. Dropping frames. This is maybe a sign that I should end the stream soon. <laughs> we just dropped another two hundred frames. Dropping more frames. Dropping frames. Sorry for stream quality bad. They do left, right, right, shift. They do shift right later on, actually. Yeah, when they, that's their equivalent of pop, is the shift right. Yeah, what if it gets up into the high order bit, which, and then won't that um, end up having. Um, having it fail so it would fail at exactly depth 32 also up oh, dropping more frames don't need frames for code rust typically checks things like overflows only for debug builds Ooh, flute of wi-fi interference yeah maybe yeah well, bit shifting to the right with an integer um is supposed to sign extend but i think in some languages it might even be like undefined behavior because you're really not supposed to be shifting right with a signed integer, right? What you mean when you shift right is divide by a power of two. So might as well say that if it's assigned. Anyway, that's just my opinion. Drop more frames. Yeah, now we're up to 652 frames dropped. 691 frames dropped. Okay, everyone's solution is essentially the same. Hard coding the brackets. Well, that's an interesting one. This is um, a little bit um, extreme. I've never seen this style where you ignore the match and you only use the conditional. Uh, 
I didn't even know you could do this. I thought that that you can't use C once you've done that, but I guess you can if you use an underscore. Interesting. You use arithmetic shift, so it'll f start filling the stack with ones. Yeah, it, it would end up being a false at the end because it won't be equal to zero, right? Valid braces. Yes, yeah, it's the same thing. So the predominant solution is to hard code the bra brackets and to do um, what I chose, which is the stack, and to combine the pop with the... Um, Oh, wait, wait. That makes me think something. If if the input is only brackets, if they said that, then I don't need to um, have this if, do I? Because if it's not an open brace, it has to be a closed brace. And then I could just... So I, don't, I wouldn't need closed braces. I could just have... Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have an idea. If you just just have braces and it's a mapping from open to close, if it's not an open, it has to be a close brace, and then we can just see if the character matches what's on this, what's the um, the mapping of what's on the stack, or we can map it right away. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I could do something like um, let braces equal. We don't even need to clone these anymore. It might be better than instead of doing a zip to go back to the original um, solution, which was to do this uh, into iter. And we don't need to zip. We would just have um, the, the pairings. I have a hard time typing these brace characters with this keyboard because it's all with my pinky. That's maybe one weakness I have with this keyboard. Okay, so I don't need these. It's going to complain about the um, references and stuff, right? Yes, so I need to do um, copied. Then I can collect, and I don't need to do that. So if braces contains it, actually, can't I just do a mm, match braces entry? See, and then I can say um, hash map. Ah, uh, what was that? Entry, entry, entry. Hash map entry, yes. Use standard collections hash map entry. So it's um entry uh, occupied. Open leads to stack push. Um, well, this would be closed, right? And if it's entry vacant, then um, it has to be the complement. So then we would um, use, the, so we can continue to use C, right? So I can say uh, this, and I don't need this. It has, it will be close, right? Well, no, it would be if C is not a, Go to. Oh wait! Oh wait! 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 The, I do the mapping first, right? So then this would be uh, close. If C is not equal to close, uh, do I have to dereference that? <gasps> I'm being raided by the primogen. What's up? I don't have the wig. I have the glasses, but they're in my car. Yeah, uh, that's right. My secret identity is Rustin. Yeah, you heard it first here. <gasps> the private had resubscribed for 11 months. What a raid. I'm actually getting kind of tired, but today I've been doing katas in Rust. Yes. Spam those Rustin emotes. <laughs> 
So this is my absurd solution to this kata over here. Valid braces. Can I get a... Is that going to work if I open this in another window? Yes, it will. So I can paste it right there. There's the kata that I was doing just now. And my absurd solution, which I'm trying to simplify down. Thank you for all the follows. <laughs> What resources am I using to, to learn Rust? I'm glad you asked that. There is an awesome resource, and it is like the master resource that you should start with, which is you just go learn Rust, and then the first link, and then it says you can either read this book or do this course or look at this other book. Or if you want to get really hardcore, you can go straight down and look at, where is it? Uh, like the cargo book or the the um, web assembly book, you can you can you know go whichever path you want. But this is the the best starting point that I know about to um to learn Rust. And um, the other the other thing I used to learn Rust is I try to stream myself coding it, and then people tell me what I'm doing wrong. It works great. <laughs> it's your birthday, Suni. Well, happy birthday. All right. Did I miss anything amongst all of the all the emotes and stuff? Thank you for so much for all the follows. I'm just kind of playing around with Rust today, trying to trying to learn some things. So I have my really really gross solution, and I've been comparing it to other people's solutions. Um, there are a lot more elegant solutions than mine, but they hard code the brace types. Where I was trying to make it generic up here and like have a or tr try to have it listed once and then have a generic solution, but um, to make it generic, I have to have like a hash map when it gets kind of complicated when you have to look things up. And then I have a stack like everyone else does, though. So at least we got that part right. <laughs> so I was in the middle of refactoring this down because um, we uh, realized that there, um, like other people are showing here, you um, this is assuming that if it's not an open brace, it has to be a closed brace. And I'm like, oh, that's right. The the uh, the problem said that. The only valid input will be open or closed brackets or braces. So I don't need to have this matching everything everything else. So everything is either in the set of closed braces or it's not. So um, this vacant case, right, is where, um, uh, what was it? If we find it as a key, then we're going to push its value and then if we don't find it as a key, then we're going to see if the thing on the top of the stack is the value. So I don't need this sum, do I? Yeah, I can just say if that is not equal to sum C, then return false. Uh, I can't do that? Copy applied to, oh yeah, this problem, um, the, um, uh, what is it? It's gonna, it has a problem with, uh, gurgur, Occupied entry. That's an option, but C is not, let's see, is a character. Why is it having pr trouble with this? Binary operation not equal cannot be applied to a type option of a occupied entry. Where is it getting that from? This is that C, isn't it? Um, is it because it got consumed or something like that? Is it just confused? Am I confused? Probably. Um, I don't need that though. I don't get this. Uh, that's not going to help. <laughs> Start with a compiler error index. I don't get it. It's saying that this is some weird type. But, oh, wait, wait, wait. It's what we're pushing. Uh, this has got to be on dereference, right? Or um, dot value or something. Uh, how do you convert an entry into its? Um, I I know what I know what to look for. It's this thing. I need to convert that into its value. Is it just get? That gets the key. How do I get the value? 
Um, or is that the value? That's okay. Key gives me the key. Is it? Is it get? Git gets me a reference to the value. That's good enough. So git. And then, right, so I need to dereference that because we don't need the original reference. And then what's wrong with this one? Mutable. Wait, what? Why does it need to be mutable? I don't want to borrow it as mutable. Cannot borrow as mutable. Why? Oh, um, entry needs it to be mutable. How do we do it without... Is there an, an, an immutable entry in HashMap? Probably get or something. That's probably what I want, right? I just want to do a get, not an entry. Then it's either going to be in there or it's not. So it's either going to be some closed brace or it's going to be none. Yeah, that's what I should have done from the beginning. And expected a reference to a character. Okay, have a reference to a character. That's fine, and I don't need to do this get anymore, do I? It's just some close brace. And this is, again, it wants a reference. Why does it want a reference there? Uh, am I pushing the wrong thing on here? I am. Uh, I can do that trick there. There we go. And now what does it say? I don't need to do an into iter because it's redundant. Am I changing it here? Blah, 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 blah. Uh, what? Just iter? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's a lot cleaner and closer to what everyone else has, so I feel like I learned something. Let's see if I actually got it right, though. So I will, um, can I go back? Train again? Yes, I want to try again. I want to be better this time. Attempt. Yes. Submit. All right, I'm happy with my solution now. <laughs> it's not as uh, co compact as other people's, but mine has the advantage of you can add more pairs here. I like it. Have you tried Rust inlay hints? I started with that, but it friggin' annoyed me because I wasn't used to it. So I actually turned them off. Um, and But now I get annoyed that I don't know the type and I have to hover over it to see the type. So maybe I ought to turn it back on, right? <laughs> Um, it is available in VS Code if you use one of the two plugins. I don't know if I'm using the right plugin, though. I'm using the Rust Analyzer plugin. I don't know if that has the um, the inlay hints or not. I know the other one does, though. How many other braces are there? Yeah. Uh, let's let's think. You could have exactly. You could have you could have those, right? There. Mine's now better because I only had to add one line. Uh, what else might we have? You might have. Um, I don't know. Hashtag and hashtag? No, that would confuse the heck out of it. Looking at my keyboard, I don't see any other pairs. Oh, you might have back and forward um, tick. There you go. There you go. Oh, yeah, the double. Yeah, you could, we could go Unicode. Why not? Let's go Unicode. Friggin' ASCII. See you later. Now we support Unicode. Yes. Now that I've opened the doors to Unicode, you're, it's, a, it's as open as your imagination is because there's probably thousands of complementary pairs in Unicode. Yes, exactly. So, um, what was I? Oh, yeah, the inlay hints. I don't know if this supports it, though. Maybe it isn't I to have it turned off. It's possible. Not this file. I want preferences. Uh, it would be at the bottom, right? Where I have the Rust stuff. Oh, yeah, here it is. Here's, there it is. If we turn it back on. Maybe I should just learn to love the inlay hints. Maybe. Because I've been getting too annoyed having to hover over to see it. Maybe I'll just get used to this. And I'll have to thank the Primogen for... Uh, or perhaps thank Rustin for the uh, encouragement. <laughs> yeah, I I had I guess it's on by default because if I just delete this, they're there. But I think the first day I looked at Rust, I was like, "What the heck is this? I can't I can't copy paste it. What is that? I, I, like when you copy that and paste it, you don't get that thing." And it was like freaking me out. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I keep forgetting that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll keep them turned on then. Should we just look at the next thing? I've been looking at this too long. Let's go on to the next. Common denominators. You will have to list. No, you will have a list of rationals in the form of numerator, denominator, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, where all numbers are positive ints. It's good that we know what an int is. Because integer is too long to write here. So, you know, preserving space, we say ints. You have to reduce the result in the form n1d to nnd or n1... What? Oh, okay. This is all, they're all just different in the braces they use. Depending on the language, I see. Why do they even bother saying all that? Why don't they just say depending on the language? I don't know. Why do I critique people's descriptions? I don't know. In which D is as small as possible and N1 over D is equal to numerator 1 over denominator 1. What? Does that mean it's like they're all, e it's equal to all of them? For example, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4 should be 6, 12, 4, 12, 6. Oh, this is another math problem. Find the um, least common multiple or whatever it's called. Least, uh, lowest common mo multiple. D as, is as small as possible. It's as small as possible and satisfies the, um, it's basically find the, the turn on these fractions to all have the same denominator. Well, obviously this is meant, uh, to help someone in math. <laughs> I want to add these fractions. Please make me a computer program that will do it for me. Because, yeah, once you have them in this form, you would just add the numerators, and then you'd have the answer, right? It's hard to satisfy with the smallest possible D. <laughs> Least common denominator? Is that the term? I forget math. Me no good with math. Okay, due to the fact that first translations were written long ago, one of the four years, these translations have only irreducible fractions. Newer translations have some reducible fractions. To be on the safe side, it's better to, to do a bit more work by simplifying fractions, even if they don't have to be. Um, okay. I don't get this. Um, uh, I'm just going to ignore it because I don't understand it. Note for bash? You can actually solve this with bash? That's crazy. Crazy. All right, let's do it. Not in bash, but I'll do it in rust because it's a rust day. Convert fractions. So really, it's all in the math, right? It's um, figuring out the least common denominator. The wording is a little bit bad. They, the title does say common denominators. Um, I forget how the best solution for this, but there was like a, a generic mathematical formula for this, right? Least a common, mul it is least common multiple. Math is fun. Yes, we want to find the least common multiple of the divisors. So, how can we do it? Okay, what what are they saying? I skipped too fast. You just list the multiples? Um, okay. Oh, multiply by 2, by 3, by 4, etc. until you get a match. Is that, that's not the best way, is it? There's another way. Yeah, this is what we want. No, that's a tool. Does the tool tell us how it works? No, it just does it. This guy, I thought there was like a... Maybe in Wikipedia they'll tell us how to do it. See, the, I, I, I do what you can't do in school, which is I, I just look up the answer. What is the algorithm, right? Euclidean GCD? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, right? I don't, so I consider this not part of the kata. This is the math part, which I don't mind cheating about. So I'm just going to look up what the formula is. You're saying it's you find the GCD, then it's A times B over the GCD of A and B. So how do we find it? Blah, blah, blah. How do we do it? I want... Oh, here we go. Here's the formula that you just said in chat. Great. I don't need to know how the formula works or why. I just want to implement it. So how do I, how would I implement it? 
There are fast algorithms for computing that do not require the the factors to be factored. The numbers to be factored, such as the Euclidean algorithm. Maybe that's what we'll just do. Let's do the Euclidean algorithm. Yes, it's an efficient method of computing the greatest common divisor. And there, there's Euclid. Wow. All right. Um... Principle that the greatest common divisor of numerous does not change if the larger number is replaced by the, its difference with the smaller number. 21 is the greatest common number, or 252 and 105. And the same number is also the greatest. Okay, so how does this work? I just want the algorithm. Can you just tell me how to do it? Procedure, here we go. You begin with two non-negative remainders. The remainders decrease steadily with every step. The goal of the case is to find the quotient and remainder that satisfy the equation that... Okay, I'm having a hard time understanding that. Remember, I'm math scares me. Yeah, I like pictures. That helps. <laughs> The pseudocode is way simpler. Do they have pseudocode? That's what I, oh, there we go. Yeah, I, I, look, all respect to the mathematicians, I, I, I implement, I don't come up with math. So I'm just gonna take the pseudocode. All right, um, yes, so let's take that. And ultimately, we want some GCD of between two numbers, right? Um, A and B. It gives me some something. We're, we're going to do that, right? I promise. We'll get to, back to it. And then the least common multiple is in terms of these two. I wish I could type better. We said it is um, A times B divided by the greatest common denominator of the two. Perfect. So then once we do that, which I'll do in a minute with the pseudocode, the answer to this is we... Um, Oh, how do we do it with more than two? Do we just repeat the process and accumulate the largest? I don't know. How do we do it with multiple? Ooh. Do I need to go back and look at this again? Because they said something about that. More than two numbers. Ooh, I don't know. I'm scared. <laughs> it's commutative, which means what? I forget I forget what that means. Let's say um G uh least common multiple multiple numbers. Mm. Mm, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. How about 3? This, I don't know how to do this. Okay, now, now I'm going to get stuck, aren't I? Wait, what? How did, I didn't know that Bing did that. I think the problem is I skip too fast. I'm just looking for the answer. I'm impatient. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let, let XOR help me. In fact, I'm gonna give you a lot of points right now. Points, because I'm not patient with math today. I'll just give you five points. So A, B, and C, it's A, B. So it's the least common multiple. Oh, so it just accumulates? Okay, well then I can just do a fold then, right? So then um, function at least common multiple with a vector of them. Well, do I want vector or should I be nice and make it a slice? Nice and make it a slice. L is a T. I64. Where, where T is 
something we can reference as a slice of you in sixty of in sixty fours. Uh, I don't like L because it's hard to see. How about list? Let list equal list dot at. See that the in that that was freaking me out that it was moving my text around. But that is kind of neat. I can see that it's a that it's a reference to a, a list now. So I can say um uh list dot. Well, actually, I don't even need the let now, right? I can just say as ref. Thank you for the follows. I really appreciate that. I can say um, as ref iter. Now we have an iterator of in 64s. Uh, fold. Um, the initial is zero or one. I guess the initial will be one. And then the function would be um, given the, um, the previous least common multiple and the uh, the next one the next number would be um the least common multiple of lcm and n i shouldn't use that name it's going to be confusing um what to name it though how about we name it rustin because i can uh that's the answer right no because it's defined multiple times. I can't name it multiple things. How about LCM? How about Omega LCM? Because I can. Now, this n is wrong. Why? Because I need to do copied. Yes, because otherwise I get references. So, yeah, so the, in, the inline typing is sort of... Sort of confusing me, but I guess it's helpful to see the types everywhere. Uh, anyway, so then um, my code is going to be um, let uh, LCM equal Omega LCM of, and I have to give it the list. So I need to uh, kind of take the, I don't like L, let's call it list. Um, I need the second one for everything. So we're going to say um, list dot iter dot map. Forget the numerator and look at the denominator. And actually, that doesn't need to be... I got the type here wrong, don't I? Don't I just need to say that it iterates... An iterator of 64s? Or do I need to say it's into? Or, or uh, um, 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 yeah, into that item equals. I uh, can't say that. Traits with that. Okay, yeah, I can't do that. Um, shoot. Uh, 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 um, 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 I don't know. Is it. <sighs> Okay, forget the into stuff. We'll just say it's, it is an iterator. Then I don't need to do any of this stuff. Um, I don't need the copied either. It's just the fold, right? So then, um, what's wrong with the map here then? Expected one, but got two. Really? Because when I iterate it, shouldn't I get... Oh, no, it is one. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one tuple, right? And now is that wrong? Okay, I match. Whoops, 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 whoops. Time is match. Okay, is it that it's just not an iterator? Time match resolving that as a function once required because of the requirements of the input of iterator. Um, yeah, okay, I don't understand that. Let me let me get to listen to an, uh, let denominators equal that. What is the type of that? It's an iterator where the item is something, and we don't know what the something is. Why don't we know? I don't get it. Then what's wrong with 
saying that. Oh, is it because um, I don't haven't I haven't finished the function? Why did you say to do? Okay, no, that's not it. It still says it's a type match. Type match, type mismatch, re resolving the closure there as a function you call once, where you get a reference to a tuple, and the output is a 64-bit integer required be because of the requirements of the iterator. Iter map. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it because I didn't do copied here? Yep, that's what it was. When in doubt, copy it. <laughs> it's because the difference between borrowed and bar borrowed references and 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 um, owned values. Okay, so then um, I don't really need that there. I can just put that back into there. Yeah, the type annotations are, is is sort of hard for me to to make. It's, it's making it hard for me to read this. But we can see we get a least common multiple, right? So then, um, once we get the least common multiple, then we produce the output just by um, going through the input again. So it's going to be uh, list dot iter again, and then um, dot uh, map, and then um, again we're mapping the numerator and denominator to. Uh, we have to well, we have to do a little bit of work, right? So it's going to be we need to find out. Uh, what to multiply the numerator by and that's going to be whatever the lc so it's going to be um numerator times lcm divided by the denominator i think and then um the other part of it is the uh lcm i did that right and it doesn't like it why oh because i need to collect it in the end Collect. Got to gotta go collect it when you're done. All right. And I can consume this list now, right? I can say into it or... Is there any difference there? Oh, yeah, there is. There's the values, yeah. Because we're consuming the... We don't need the list after this point, so into it or turn, like, transforms it into an iterator, whereas iter gives you references. I need an iter up here because I wanted to just borrow the list and um, to compute the LCM and so we can use it there. All right, so then um, now I just need to fill in the GCD from that pseudocode. Let's do that. Uh, did I already lose the page that it was on? I think I did. Yes, I did. Uh, pseudocode, where are you? Um, where was it again? Oh no. What did I do with that code? Oh, it was GCD, right? It was Euclidean method. Yeah, 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 yeah. I need to go to Euclidean. No, not bookmark. Yes, I need to go here. Then look for pseudocode. <laughs> scary um, you would think that would be easy to find in the index right man mathematicians really like to be verbose don't, don't they wasn't it here somewhere Um, I thought there was pseudocode here. Am I mistaken? Oh, here it is. <sighs> okay. So we're going to mutate B. Because it says while B is uh, not equal to zero. I guess we're handling negative numbers too. Uh, we need a temporary. Oh, we're just swapping, right? So I can say, um, 
B, uh, we're swapping both of them, so mutate both of them. B dot swap. Isn't there a swap? It's a uh, standard mem swap, right? Okay. I need to actually modify one of these, don't I? Yeah, I'm. I'm not gonna try. I'm not not gonna try to be clever with the temp. I'll just say T. And uh, B equals A mod B, right? And then A equals T. Return A. There we go. All right, let's try it. I'm kind of tired of this one. <laughs> to be honest, it's scary. Oh no. I think we're off by a factor of 10 here. How did that happen? How did that happen? How are we off by a factor of 10? Which one of these was it? Oh, it's the second one. It's just, that's why they have that other test there, right? Probably. What if I remove this one for a second? I'm just want to see which one it was. Yeah, it's the second one. So there's a factor of 10 in there. <sighs> Why is there an extra factor of 10 in there? Do I need to find the greatest common divisor of all of them and then divide them first? Or do I need to turn this around and find the greatest common divisor of all three and then turn it to least common multiple? Reduce the fractions first. Is that what they were giving, telling, hinting me at with the, with the hint? Where was it? I can't even see the hint now. Um, I would have to go back to see it. There, there was like, they told me a hint to, about that. Yeah, it would. Be, I'd have to divide by the GCD of all of them, wouldn't I? It's the. I, I love the Rust. It's just the algorithm. It's kicking my butt right now. Alt F four stream. How are you doing? <laughs> I get tripped up on the algorithm stuff, so. I had to look up greatest common divisor, and like I struggled to remember, like someone in chat helped me out that the least common multiple is related to the com greatest common divisor. So this works except for, um, we've got an extra factor of 10 if the divi divisors all have a common multiple already baked in. Actually, um, these do too, don't they? Aren't they all divisible by two? Out of curiosity, what if I turn this around and, um, say that um, we have like an omega, is greatest common divisor also commutative? Like can I say omega GCD of a list of, of them? There's actually no reason for me not to make the other thing generic too. Right, I can do that. Can I do the same thing here? Aware T is an iterator of ends. It really shouldn't be an issue. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about overflow here. 
Um, can I just say the same thing? List dot fold one. Well, greatest common divider. Yeah, start at one, right? Where um, we have uh, Rustin is our magic uh, accumulator, and N such that is the GCD of um, Rustin and N. Now um, that's not working. Why? Oh, because this isn't generic. N. And neither is LCM. N. Okay, so... Okay, that didn't work. Why? Oh, I need to put constraints on N. Uh, how do I constrain N to be an integer? Is there an integer trait? That we can constrain it with? Not going down the generic... Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. I'm like, uh, maybe that's too generic. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'll remove that. There's probably a way to do it. I just don't know how to do it yet. Yeah, we're we're backing up. We're doing a... We're, we're, you know, we're in reverse gear now for a bit. Okay, I'm just wondering if I can turn this around and say Omega GCD. Uh, no, I can I can just rewrite this one. I can say this is a times b over omega. No, I can't say a times b. What am I thinking? What am I thinking? I can use the greatest common divisor here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Greatest common divisor is omega GCD. And then I'm going to divide all of the divisors by that. So that means I need to map this list before, after I copy it. So um, let's fold. Before we map here, I am going to um, map the divisor to the divisor div divided by the greatest common divisor. I'm not using the right words, I know. The, uh, that doesn't work. Why? Can't div uh, because I only want the div divisor, not the numerator. Denominator, that's the right word. I want the denominator, and I actually need to keep the numerator, so numerator and then recalculate the denominator so take the list of numbers iterate it copy the values map numerator and denominator to numerator and denominator divided by the create is common denominator then oh i don't need this step i can just um return this and i don't need this map so do the both in one and this can be ignore, right? And then divide by that. Oh, I'll need to divide by it again, won't I? So it would be um, or will it? I'll need to multiply by GCD uh, by um by GCD, right? Something tells me this is going to be an off. Off by a little bit. <sighs> Do I need to divide by GCD again? Or no? No, I don't. I just want that, right? Yeah, let me just try this. Test. Test away. No, it's still off by a factor of 10. Um, so, oh, um, hmm. Interesting. Do I need to continue to divide by GCD then? Again, not so strong in the maths. No, it's still not doing it. Yeah, yeah, I I probably caused all the mathematicians to to un unfollow, unsub, and leave by now. Oh. 
hold on. How does testing work? Oh, my thing is on the left? Okay, so I'm still not dividing by the greatest, or the greatest common denominator is wrong. Can I just, like, debug this? Thank you for the follow. I'm sorry this is taking me a while. I'm only getting one. That's the problem. It's the, that um, that Omega GCD doesn't work. This algorithm's wrong, then. Can I um, debug this? Test that. Wait a minute, it's always one. So I got this wrong somehow then. Oh yeah, it shouldn't be one, should it? I need to start with the uh, the first number. And I forget how to, it's a variant on fold. Ah, uh, where was it? Fold. Uh, iterator, it's not fold, it is fold first. That's what it is. Oh, but it's experimental only? Ah. Uh, dang it. <laughs> it's a GCD within the fractions, not across all denominators. Uh, it was doing all, all, all um... Well, I, wait a minute. Am I misunderstanding the, the math then? Because... All of these, you should be able to divide by 10. Actually, all of these, should be, you should be able to divide by at least 2, right? That's what I want to try to find. Oh, wait a minute. It has to be of... Oh, I see the problem. I can't divide these numerators by 10. That's, that's the issue. Okay, so... I'm going about this the wrong way. Hey there, Batcraft. I'm getting stuck on math. GCD starts at the fold value of zero. Greatest common. If it was zero, wouldn't it stop right away? Wouldn't you have a divide by, like if A is zero, you would get zero and then yeah, I don't think it would work. I'm I'm just going to delete this cuz I don't think it's it's right. But does it actually work? Hold on. I'm going back and forth. I'm getting stuck on this. I don't want to be stuck. Okay, if, so you're saying if B is 0, Oh, it'll skip because of that. It'll just be A. Oh. I see. Yeah, but that's not gonna that's not going to um solve my problem, is it? Because I have other issues. It did get two. Oh, thank you for the follow. So between these, it's 130. And between 130 and 4, it's... Oh, no, the device, the dividends. What am I looking at? I'm looking at the bottom one, I guess. What? Don't know what Rustin is. That's the problem. Lots of debugs. <laughs> Just because I want to understand what's going on. 0, 130, so we get 130. 130, 113, 10, we get 10. Oh, because it's doing this row here, right. And then between 10 and 4, we get 2. So we can div... Right, okay. Yeah, but okay, so the, the, what I'm doing with it is wrong. I can't do um, this stuff. It's still wrong, though, on that first line. 
because I shouldn't divide the um, the, do the numerators by it, right? Yeah, so I shouldn't even do that. So let's go back to the original problem then. This one works, but this one doesn't. Why? Why not? There, it's had. There's an extra factor of ten in there. Is it that I have to find the greatest common divisor of the numerator and the denominator for each one? Okay, then that's a lot easier to do. I don't need this omega GCD. Okay, I think I know. I think that's what it is. I need to. I need to reduce the fractions first. I think someone in chat said that. And that just wasn't in the frame of mind to listen to that. Okay, so let me th let me do that. How many times do we use list? So I'm probably going to want to form another vector because we need to iterate it twice again. So we'll fa we'll make a new list out of the original list, where um, for each one, so into iter because we're going to consume it. Uh, we're going to map every um, numerator and denominator to um, something. And we're going to collect that back into... Do I need to say the type? Let's say it in initially. Like that. Okay, and then um, we need to find what is the GCD. So um, GCD of N and D is N and D. And so we're going to make it N divided by GCD and D and D divided by GCD and D. Ah. Uh, let's just use X. <laughs> okay, and then this needs the little um, poles. Okay, so now this reduces the fractions. I don't need this anymore. This reduces the fr each fraction in independently of the others. This finds the least common multiples of all the divisors, and then this divides them all. Yay! <laughs> okay, so then I don't need this one anymore, do I? And because we're being serious now, because we have a working solution, I have to use real names here. What should I put here? This would be... Um, I can't use LCM. Let's just say accumulator. And then omega LCM, let's say LCM multiples. Multi. Okay, and did we ever, ever use LCM by itself? I don't think I did. We just use LCM multi, right? And GC, so I don't ever actually never used that. I know I used it there. Never mind. And I probably shouldn't use the word LCM inside here. So let's say LCM of um, div divisor divisor LCM. Okay, anything I... This is good. Let's just submit this. Someone's probably going to have a five-line solution, and I'll feel really dumb. But that's okay. Attempting. Submit. Yeah, my apologies for screwing up the math there. Yeah, of course. D I said five-line, didn't I? Okay, that was six, but... <laughs> okay, now how did they get down to five lines where I have all this stuff? Well, I think a lot of it is I break it up into multiple lines and they combine them, but because this one is mine down here, right? Yeah, it's the same thing, only I use more spaces. Numerator times D divided by denominator. Yeah, it's the same thing. They just use smaller, they use smaller names and put it on one line, but so that's equivalent to that. Now, the line before that is finding the D, which is this, right? Fold. Oh, that's just this line, right? 
Oh, they they took this and com they combined these two together. Oh, that's that's uh, that's smart. That's actually pretty smart. They um they just built in the division that I I did here. So if I wanted to improve mine to do that, I could do the, I could do that. It would be um yeah, wouldn't it just be that divided by? So we'll just put the numerator back in here. G C D of N and D. And then I don't need this list anymore. And try again. Yeah, and then um there's I don't need this LCM multi anymore, do I? No, I do. Yeah. So Attempt and submit that. My final solution, number two. Okay, what else did they do that I could have improved on? Well, they built the fold directly in here, and I chose to make it a function. They didn't do a copy. How'd they get away with that? Oh, they put the at outside there? Oh, so I could do the same thing. I don't, if I just put um, an at here, I don't need the copied. Right? Yep, all right. I'm learning things as I go. See, it's, it's comparing my solution to other people's solutions where I'm learning. This little trick that you can make it mac match something different, then I don't need to copy them. We just, um, we just um, de destructure it ourselves and then uh what else did they do oh this is a different approach oh i see so they just did it recursively that's the recursive solution to that this is iterative that's recursive the the if part's still the same but the else where uh, uh, where um they just they exchange so the uh, b it goes into A, and A mod B goes into B, just like this, but they do it with recursion. All right. So I mine is essentially the expanded non-recursive solution to this now, uh, equivalent of that. Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm going to give them best practices and clever, because I like that solution. Anybody else do anything different? Uh, this is just alternatives to GCD, but everything else is the same, right? Simplify. Ah. That I did here. Somewhere. Where? No, I didn't need to do that. This simplify is unnecessary, right? They chose to do it, but... Okay, so this is... Unnecessary extra work. What's this less than two business? Huh. If it's less, oh, that's the trivial case. And 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 I never think about that. You should just early exit, short circuit the trivial cases. All right, what else? It's essentially the same thing rehashed in different tons of different ways, right? Yeah. Okay, I should look back at chat and see uh, what I missed. Uh, going back, the old cache and validation and naming things. You can do denominators as blah and it'll complain when you try to com complain with the full type. Someone didn't like Rust. I'm sorry, Mon uh, Solo a Monsphere. So I have to be honest with everybody. I can't, I, I have a hard time reading that because I'm not used to this um, inlay hints being on. Turn the inlay hints off. Now it's easier for me to read. But what do you guys think? That's with the inlay off. Here's with them on. Which way is easier to read? I, this is harder to read, but it gives you more hints about what the types are everywhere. Maybe if the font was like darker gray, it wouldn't get in the way of me understanding the code. Maybe. Or maybe there's another style where I could put the types all the way out to the right so that it didn't interfere. 
that would actually be a good compromise. If it moved this gray text and put it out over here in this black area, that would be best. You could try turning off the inlay hints for function calls while leaving them on elsewhere. Huh. You can do it selectively. Been using Rust for a while, you find it hard to recompare to other languages I'm used to anyways. Fair enough. So maybe I just get used to reading it like that. I think what I'll do is I'll turn them on if I need help with types. Otherwise, I'm going to keep them off. Because, I mean, it, there's a far less code here than it looked like there was before. In fact, this is so... I could just reduce these down to make them single liners again if I really wanted to. Actually, I kind of, I kind of like once I turn something into an iter iterator to start going vertically with the operations. All right, what else What else did I miss? I could do inter iter instead of iter. Yeah, to consume it, yep. And I also learned that instead of doing copied, I can just put, um, I can destructure it that way. You could use recursive implementation to avoid swapping. Yeah, LLXR had it. Recursion, good, imperative, bad. I suppose so. Because won't the compiler, um, since there are no local variables, if we do it recursively, there wouldn't really be much stack use, right? I, I wonder how, the, how much the stack will be used if I make it recursive. Hold on, I'm, I need to catch up in chat a bit. Probably everybody was getting frustrated that I couldn't get the math, and I, my, my apologies for that, but yeah, I, it's been like years and years since I've had to do this kind of math. <laughs> the algo works fine, you just need to reduce the fractions first. Yeah, that's what I, I didn't understand for a long time. Might be an overflow, but A times B might be an overflow, but not really an issue here, yeah. Dropped out of college twice, algorithms aren't your greatest strong suit, neither are, are, is it for me. The GCC, GCD should be commutative. Yeah, so someone helped me out that it is commutative if the full, if you, for GCD, not LCM, but L, GCD, if you start with zero, it works. But it turns out I didn't need it. Yeah. That, those little things that I just can't hold on to in my brain. Any number can be written as a multiple of primes. That's the other way to do this, but this, if I can just, if I started with the pseudocode for that, I just roll with it. I don't need to compute primes. Even though I'm sure, um, in the spirit of primogen rating me, I should have done the prime number approach, now that I think about it. Trying to constrain numbers in Rust is painful. Yeah, if you, to make this generic. If there was a trait that, it, that represented all things that could be compared and, and taken the mo modulus and division of, then we would use it. Yes, okay. And hey there, Batcraft. I think I did say hi, right? I stopped doing waves in chat, though, because too, there are too many of them backed up. It's because the first and last fractions are not in their simplest form. They should be divided by G. Yeah. Uh-huh. The original problem. Do we have the original problem? Here was the original problem if no one posted it. You test another theme. That's true. Can't live without inlay hints. I'm okay turning them on if I need them, I think. Check out the num traits crate. Okay. Let's learn something. Let's look at... I prefer libs.rs. It's the unofficial alternative to, to, to crates.io. Num traits. I don't think I'm allowed to pull in a crate inside a kata, though. Let's see how it works, though. Uh, do I have to look at their... API reference? Usually I do. Oh, look at that. So can I have like a trait that just supports division? Ah, so we can say that like it supports checked division or something. No, that performs division. What? Hmm. From primitive? As primitive? Casting between machine scalers with the as? Okay. I think I'm going to have to study this a little bit more detail than I want to do right now. <laughs> but thank you for that. Let me, uh, since I haven't made any notes, might as well start making notes today. Thank you, Sarian. 
and been the slightest bit spammy. No, you haven't been spammy. Spammy. And thank you for LLXOR. Before you go, have five more points. Now you have 11. For divisions, you can just use the div trait. Is there a div trait? That's all we really need, right? Because that's all I'm actually doing. Um, div. Oh, that's the operator. But where's the, is there a trait? I'll have to look into this later. Or other standard ops traits. Okay. Let me look. Let me. This will be my homework later to look up this stuff. Thank you, Gray Jack, for giving me more homework. I I enjoy homework. I try to tell my kids the same thing. Homework is good. <laughs> Num traits collects them into a single trait. Okay. So we'll consider that while I'm look researching that for homework. All right. Um. Moving on. Moving on. I think I only have time enough to do like one more. Next kata. Some numbers have funny properties. For example, 8, 9 is 8 to the first power plus 9 to the second power. All right. 695 is 6 squared plus 9 cubed plus 5 to the fourth power. Oh, no, it's not that it equal. It leads to that, which is equal to 695 times 2. Two. And why is the two significant here? Times one times two times fifty one. What? Three, four. F I think I might be skipping this one. This one's getting a little too mathematical. I'm scared. Given a positive integer n written as a, b, c, d, and a positive integer p, we want to find a positive integer k if it exists such that the sum of the digits of n taken to the consecutive powers of p is equal to k times n. Okay. So when I factor k? No. I would, I would compute n. No, that's not it either. n is given. Okay, n is given. So I would take n and compute the sum of the digits taken to consecutive power. Oh, but we don't know which powers to start with. I'm going to skip this one. You know, I'm just I'm tired of math. <laughs> In this cut, you have to correctly return who is the survivor, i.e. the last element of a Josephus permutation. Ooh. To assume that n people are put into a circle and they're eliminated in in steps of k elements like this. 7, 3 means 7 people in a circle. 1 every 3 is eliminated until 1 remains. Initial sequence. Okay, and then we slice out every third one. 3 is counted out. And 6 is counted out, yes. Oh, and then we're rotating around, right? So it's like keep, keep, drop, keep, keep, drop. Keep, keep, drop. Keep, keep. So seven is next. Yes. And then next would be, so five would be counted out. And then the next, so one, two. So one is counted. Okay, I got it. I, I got it. The above link about base kata description will give you more thorough insight about the origin of this kind of permutations. Basically, it's all that there is to know to solve this kata. Using the solution to the other kata, I guess there's another kata we could do. Let's just, I think I know enough to do this. Train. We must train. Joseph, a survivor. Looks like prime factorization. Yeah, sorry, Red Rampage Crumpet. Remember, for me, college was like many, many years ago. You're in college, right? So you're more, much more apt to be able to handle the mathematical katas than I am. I barely remember enough algebra to help my kids out. <laughs> actually, I've actually had to read their algebra books to re relearn some of it to help them. Um, n, I didn't expect to see an integer. Oh, we need to build the initial sequence. So let uh, survivors equal, um, don't I just count 
wasn't there a way to count in uh to make an iterator? I thought there were, I thought you could just say count. Count. Now that's counting the things in the iterator. Counted? Well, I can just make a, a range, right? Can you turn a range into an iterator? You can, right? So I can just say 1 to an inclusive. Because they start off at 1, right? Yes. 1 to an inclusive uh, collect into um, a vector. And I'm going to turn the inlay hints back on. Yeah, there we go. Vector of integers. Okay, so then I think what we'll do is have um, uh, should I just do it the brute force approach? Just make a new vector every every iteration? And a, and a better one would be not to use a vector, but to use a um, a linked list, right? Because we'll just walk through and and splice off until we're reduced to one element. Actually, linked lists in Rust are really fun. So why don't we do that? Fun as in, quote, fun. Right? So um, let's try to define a linked list that actually works correctly. It would be um, using RCs and weeks, right? So um, struct node has a um, next... We, make, we can just make it doubly linked. We can have a previous, which is a um, weak node. Uh, hitting the wrong key. No, other key. No. No. There we go. I need to remember what um, module weak is in, because I'm weak in my memory. Uh, weak. It's in RC. So let's just pull in RC fun. Use standard RC. Okay, that's because I need to say we're using weak, but we're also even going to be using RC. Okay, so then um, our list is going to have um, a strong pointer to hold on to the list. And then between nodes, there are weak pointers. That won't quite work, will it? I need to have the next be strong, right? Or no, I can have, I can have this just be all in a big pool. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Wait a minute, do I even need a linked list? Can I just use numbers? Hey, what am I doing? This is too too much fun. We can't have too, we can't have that much fun. We should just have a bunch of numbers that we start with two and go to n plus one, because that says what the next one is. No, that won't work. I will, what I'll do is I'll just do a zero to n, and I will um, iterate that one and then do a, um, do I need to do iter on a range? Maybe not. I want to do a map, right? n to, and here's where I turn off the uh, types for a little bit. Um, it should be n plus one modulo uh, I shouldn't use n. I should use uh, i, because I want to do modulo n. So in other words, it should be um, each one will point to the the um, index that's um, that's next. So um, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, zero instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it being zero based. So this is um so this isn't survivors n next. Well, it is it is the next. Let next equal that and then let um first equal 0. Right? So then um complete that one. And this should be n. And what's wrong with this? Did I mess this up somehow? Or does it just need need to know the type? Try to do a collect on map range. Um, yes. Do I need to do an iter here? No. 
Intuitor. Okay, but what's what's wrong with my collect? Come on. Wait a minute, what's, okay, type problems again? Is this what it means? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's never where I expect it to be in Rust. Okay, um... False. All right. <laughs> you want to collect your border collecting. What collect does is it um, takes um, a, a an iteration, like it's like a a generator. It's going to generate numbers, and it actually makes them into a vector. So it actually allocates memory for it all. So then, once we have memory for it, that's our linked list in array form. And so we're going to just start with the first one and go until we only have one left. So um, that would be. Uh, while next of first is not equal to first. Uh, we want to um, eliminate, we want to go K forward and drop it, right? So, um, so this has to be mutable. So I need to do this three times. So let's maybe make, um, uh, do I need another function? I guess I can just do another range here for uh, zero for um, that in zero to uh, k. The toggle for inlay hints in the sh control shift p menu. Oh yeah, look at that. Thank you, Sarian. Sometimes it helps to run the compiler with a terminal if you're confused about an error. Yeah. I just usually pop that up, but yeah, you're right. I could have just, I could have also just done, um, give me a terminal cargo clippy. It's just going to give me warnings about other things too. Yeah. Other parts of the code that I was working on in this project. I didn't start with a clean project here. So we just want to say, um, first equals next first, right? And why can't I do that? Oh, because I don't have, I'm not done yet. And I, oh, those have to, yeah. So this has to be, um, at this whole thing as, well, can't I just do N as U size? What is I, um, yeah. And, oh, yeah. So, um, let n equal n as u size. This is why I don't like i32 for these kinds of things, because uh, actually, what's a yeah? We don't. It's it's of course it's going to lose. So how do I tell it that I don't care about it losing the sign? That's just a clippy warning. I'm not going to care about that. You don't need to do into iter. The range since it's already an iterator. I wasn't sure about that. Okay, yeah, you're right. Plasma. I have a hard time remembering these things though. Like, how do I drill it into my head that that is an iterator? To me, it's a range, not an iterator. In fact, if I do that, it's going to tell me it's a range. It doesn't say it's an iterator. I have to somehow remember that range is also an iterator. U size from. Oh, that's a good idea. And then just um, panic, right? So unwrap it. Uh, you can't unwrap it? Um, okay. Do I have to say as you size? No. Interesting. You can't do that for some reason. Do I have to do try from and then... Um, Unwrap it. Something tells me I need to do that. Is there no try from? Ah. <laughs> right. 
ranges and Rust have a terrible API? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say N as U size and warning be damned right now. So you know it's an iterator. Yeah, that I think that's what I read too, right? That they made it an iterator so that it would make sense to do it in a for loop. Okay, so um what am I doing here? This is moving, and so then to eliminate it, we would um, say next first equals next next first, I think, if I'm thinking about this the right way. Yes. I think that's all I need to do. And next has to be mutable. And then this will return first plus one as a U an I32 because that's what they wanted. Yeah, it's going to warn me about the casting. Do I care? I'm not going to care. Brute force it. Did I get it right? No. Messed it up. Okay, so let me debug it then. Um, oh, wait, wait. I had to do that out of the for loop. That's the problem. Okay, test it again. Nope, that's still not right. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just debug each step. And we'll just see it in action. When in doubt, debug. Okay, so one, two, three, and then we cut it. So now it's one, two, three, five, because that's what we said it should be. And then... Five, six, and then... Zero, and then... Two. Let me think about this. If we started with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven... And we're supposed to to um then go to five, six, seven, and then was it remove did I get this wrong were we, were we supposed to remove three and not four? um I guess we can flip back to instructions, oh yeah, I got it wrong, okay, so then um. We only we go to, we go to k minus one like that, or actually I can just do one to k, right? Now test, still fail. Okay, one two. So we um got rid of the three, four five, and we got rid of the six. Got rid of four that time. What do we end up with? Are we just off by one? Do I add one? And am I adding one inappropriately here? No, I should add one, right? So why am I getting five instead of four? Let me go back to the example. So three, six, two. Three, six. I think I, I think I'm, I'm off by one somewhere. I think it has to do with the fact that their numbers start with one and the indices start at zero. So really, the first one removed is the one at index two. I should probably display what first is uh, there. And here. So we skip, skip, and then we 
8 is, so it becomes 1, 2, 4, 5, and then the 0 we should think of as 7, right? 1, 2, 4, 5, 7. And then, is it maybe one of the way I, that I wrap around? 1, 4. Yeah, 5, 7. No. I think that's where I messed up, right? It should have counted 7 out. Ah. <laughs> it's hard because I'm off by 1. One, two, four, five, seven, one, four, five, one, four, one, four. Then why is it adding one? I'm off by one somewhere. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not the right thing to do to just say that, but I'll at least get past the first test. No, it didn't even pass that one. Oh, it's the longer sequence that failed. Yeah, because it says zero instead of a hundred. I mean, that's what it should be. When we're down to one left, because our indices start at zero, but the ones in the array start with one, it should be, and it should be that, this, uh, it should be that plus one, right? It sh I think it should, the plus one is valid because the number started one. So when we, when we get down to one element left, which just says four, that's index three right? That's the only one that's left. So the problem is we got to four being the last one, uh, not three somehow. It eliminated three. Where did it eliminate three? Here. Well, that's where it eliminated index two. Oh, wait, wait. I didn't advance it. I'm supposed to advance it when I eliminate it. That's the problem. This actually needs to advance it. So I need to say um, first equals next. First is the wrong word. Let's say um, step instead of first. Oh, you can't say that? Okay, then I'll just do step equals next step. Ah, dang it. <laughs> so we're at zero, we're at one, we're at two, we remove it. So then we're at four. Zero, one, two, we counted three out, and then we're at four. So the next one to remove will be the three, or the six, right? So we're at four, and then we go five, six, And, oh, it, why did it remove that? Maybe I don't step there. Yeah, that's wrong. That's wrong. These are hard. <laughs> Maybe I'll never get to 5Q.
zero one two drop it and four five uh why is the next one zero because they told us seven three right oh i didn't go far enough right the size of this array is what? Zero, not including n. So that would be zero to six. That should be seven, right? Oh, this is modding the wrong number though, right? No, that's correct. So it should be like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, yeah. Five, six, zero. So wait, why did this print out the wrong thing then? Why is at step five, why is the next zero and not six? Oh, because we dropped it. Why did we drop it there? Because that didn't advance? Zero, one, two, drop that. So then the next one is... Wait a minute. It went to four and... So if we start at the first go do we go we go two and then drop it and then one two drop that one one two yeah so then what I'm isn't that what I'm doing I'm starting at step zero if k is three then we're, we're, we're stepping twice, right? And then at that step, we go, we, um, this is how we, we cut out a step. <laughs> Why am I having such a hard time thinking about this? Hmm. What if I, um, I think I need more debugging steps. What if I, uh, can I just debug the whole thing? So I say, um, next equal debug next. Okay. So after we cut out one, it goes one, it goes uh, one, two, and then jump to four. Oh, maybe that's what's wrong. So zero goes to one, one goes to two, two goes to four, four goes to five, five goes to six, six goes to zero. Okay. The next one we cut out is at five. So it goes zero to one, one to two, two to four, four to five, five to zero. So we removed the seven. That's what we should have done. No, we removed this, we removed the wrong one. <gasps> okay. So it should have. Zero goes to one, one. Four goes to five. 
Actually, it's at this point it's um one two three uh five six yeah wait a minute we're supposed to drop the six Oh, am I stepping too far? I think I am stepping too far. I think I, s I might see it. <sighs> it's hard, though. I don't know why I'm such a ha I'm having such a hard time doing this. These are hard for me. <laughs> Yeah, this is wrong. We stepped too far. Let me get rid of um, these. Mm. Two then, and then an extra step here. No. <laughs> I think it'd be easier to see if I did this, um, Enumerate. Iter. Enumerate. I can't do that. Can I just do that? And then what? Collect. into uh, a vector of hashes. Okay. So it's one, three, No, I'm I'm not even printing out what I want to see. <sighs> Forget this. <laughs> Thank you for following. I'm sorry I'm super frustrated and I'm getting and I'm totally stuck for the last ten minutes. I'll get it though. I I I am determined to figure out what I'm doing wrong. If we're sitting on this one, we need to eliminate three, so we need to move over two. Oh, but I need to go back one. So 
So if we if we're supposed to, oh, I see. So I should really start. The step should start at n, really, or really it should be the at the at the end. So this should be like um, k minus one, and then we move that way, and then uh, I don't do that. Right? Uh, why is this a problem now? What did they do here? Oh, is this because of this debug? Uh, oh, the inlay hints are wrong. Oh, this is this is not even correct. That should be n, and so move that to there. All right. Yeah, it was it. <laughs> Am I done with the multiplayer dungeon game? No, that's going to be... That's my long-term project that's going to take a, a bit more time than I originally thought, as always. What's the purpose of the next vector? It's like uh, pointing to the, to the next place in the list. So, yeah. my The way... I, I was just getting myself confused, but the way I'm doing this, um, by remo to, to, in order... To represent the, the list when we're counting things out is I, instead of having a list of numbers, I have a list of, of indices to the next number. So it's hard for me to even envision in my mind. So instead of actually making a new list that looks like that, we go from a list that starts... Uh, actually, it's easier for me to just copy this and show you in another, another editor. Can I just copy all... Ah, come on, editor. It's multiple scroll bars. So, instead of that, I'm representing it, it as pointers to the next. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 0, right? And to count 3 out means we go to uh, 0, 1, um, 3. And that point you can't get to in... Um, hold on. No, 0, 2. 3, and at that point, index 2 becomes unavailable, right? Uh, 2. Oh, wait. Um, I, I'm even, I'm thinking about my own code wrong. I added a plus 1 in there on purpose. Okay, so then, yeah, it's... <sighs> One, two, three, four, five, six, zero, and then it goes to one, three, and so in um, it's easier if I if I have an extra line, I'll show you what the indices are. That's index zero, one, two, three, four, five, six indices, right? So um, this one at index zero, it says the next one is at one, and at one, the next is two, at two, the next is three. So to remove the three out means that instead of the next one being two, the next one is now three, and so you can't get to the third one anymore, right? Now it's, it's like that. And so that counting the six out means it's one, so this, so um, you uh, remove the, the next, you go three more, right? So that's zero, uh, no, one, three, two, yeah, it would be, um, six, zero, right? And then counting the two out is, um, we go to three and then that's not available anymore Four six zero, and then counting the seven out, it's zero and then counting the four the five out is um going to um uh three zero and then the last one is um just the um uh zero no yeah it would just be z uh three Um, so instead of the actual numbers in the list 
and um, we just hold on to what is what where to go next, and we're just jumping three at a time. So we start at zero, and we go jump uh, one uh, one. We count it one, uh, one two three. Eliminate that one two uh, um, one two three. Eliminate that one two three. Eliminate that one two three. Eliminate that uh, one two three. Eliminate. One, two, uh, one, two, three. No. Did I get this right? That's removed. So now we're sitting there. One, two, three. It's like eeny, meeny, miny, drop. Eeny, meeny, miny, drop. Um, so I didn't have to allocate a linked list. I didn't have to have pointers and stuff like that. But the trick is that I had to think of it in terms of the pointer to the next every time. And you have to remember where we are and move it at the right time. So it, it's really confusing because also they started at, they started counting at one, but the indices counted zero. <laughs> so I think I finally got it. Don't ask me to write this again though, but that's gonna be our. Can I just clean this up at all? And minus one. Yeah, I think this is going to be it. One more test, and we'll attempt the final solution. I think it should pass. Is it going to time out? Is it going to tell me, like, I need to be more efficient? I'll be super bummed if it tells me that. Oh, man. Really? It's telling me I need to be smarter and more mathematical about it. I can't just step. So it has to be order one, not order n. That's what it's telling me, right? Well, shoot. You know, this isn't a programming test anymore, is it? It's a mathematical test again. They don't want me to actually count like they said I should. They want me to... Um, do it some kind of mathematical way. Uh, screw that. I think I'm just going to be done then. <laughs> Can I um, report an issue against this one? I'm going to say this kata has uh, little to do with programming and mostly to do with math. Um, it should go on math wars.com not code wars.com uh, respect respective res, um, respectfully in my opinion it should go on mathwars.com not code wars.com there we go I posted it All right, I'm done. <laughs> that that's effectively killed uh, my mood for the rest of the day, <laughs> for the rest of the stream. You sure your solutions works through and didn't infinite loop? Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure what they did, because I've seen this before for these math ones, is that um, they um, for the unit tests they give you um, a pretty f small bound. But if for the real test, they give you like a bound that's in the billions or quadrillions. And they say, oh, well, if you did an order one solution with the math trick, then you won't need any time. You can do it in constant time. But if you do the naive approach, the non-mathematical approach, where you actually walk the sequence, then it takes so much time that they time out. And I, I think it's a trick question. I think it becomes a math wars a kata, not a code wars. Because... If you just reduce this down to some math trickery, then why, what is, what's the coding? What's the coding challenge? Uh, I guess I can look at, can I look at the solutions and just give up? Forfeit eligibility, yeah, I hate, I hate it. Yeah, these are all mathematical, right? This fold in the range stuff.
Yeah, I don't even understand it. it it's got to be some math trick. Oh, this kind of looks like my solution. I wonder if I did get something wrong. Yeah, the advent of code, some of the advent of code problems I had trouble with too because they required you to do some math. Like some of them I just couldn't solve and it came down to the, some kind of trick you have to recognize. Maybe I do have an infinite loop bug because this kind of looks like what I did. They're, they're even like um, doing remove on a vector which does a whole lot of memory copies. And I tried to do without the memory copy. Here's the math trick again. Which I don't, I don't even understand this, so yeah, it's okay. I don't care. Again with the remove. What did I do differently then? Collected, that's what I started with, except, yeah, that's exactly what I started with, right? That's a more elegant way to do what I did. They just had one to n plus one instead of the map and then collect it to a vector. And then what is this? They started... Okay, they just had their starting point is different. I don't know what I did wrong. I did something wrong, that's for sure. I don't know. I, I I'm I'm annoyed by this one. <laughs> like I, th none of these really explain. Is there any are there any comments on here I could learn from? No, there's no comments on any of these. This doesn't help me at all. No, no, no. I don't want to do this. Think your programming in the program is the best way to solve a programming problem. What? I don't I don't get it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm annoyed which means I probably should stop the stream. So, let's find someone else who can we can raid. And I'm going to try to forget the last hour of my life. Okay. <laughs> uh Yeah, it's that it was that bad. Yeah. Okay. Um What am I doing? I am going to my follower list. Following list. See if anyone following is streaming right now. Uh, should we just jump to Chris's channel? He's the one who got me into this. <laughs> Blame him for, for everything that goes wrong. I'm just kidding. All right. It's also my sub anniversary there. So perfect. I'm going to raid Chris. He's the one who got me into uh, the coding katas on Code Wars. And so let's just go over there and raid him and tell him how it went. Thank you for the follows. Sorry it was a bit of a frustrating end to the stream. But yeah, sometimes when we have these challenges, sometimes I just don't, I can't do them. The more, the more math and uh, a algorithm thinking is involved, the less likely I am to be able to do it. All right, I'm going to rate Chris. Hope you have fun watching Chris. He is doing um, web dev with, uh, actually he was showing his Rust-based project, but now he's, he's also going, working on his Code Biscuits VS Code extension. So if you like... Web dev, or you're like looking at VS Code extensions, this is the place to be. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you next time, probably on Monday. All right, bye, 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 bye.